Good morning, members, uh, officers, and any members of the public who are viewing the live stream this morning. Welcome to the meeting of the Grants Advisory Committee. This is the first time we've done this meeting from Camborne's chamber with all the new technology. So if we go completely pear-shaped, please forgive us. And if we make mistakes, forgive us. Okay, thank you. So, um, my name's Joe Hales. I'm the chair of the Grants Advisory Committee. Uh, for information for members of the public, the role of our committee is to consider and make recommendations to the cabinet member for finance, John Williams, Councillor John Williams, who's on the screen, on applications made under the council's grant scheme. Councillor Williams then make, makes his decision taking into account our recommendations. Please note the COVID safety procedures which have been laid out for each of the member, member at their desk. Aaron, do we have any apologies, please? And we have apologies from Councillor Peter MacDonald, winged with Martin Khan substituting in his place. Thank you very much. Welcome, Martin. Thank you. And uh, it's in there item number two, declarations of interest. Does any members have uh, declarations of interest? So any of the um, items? Councillor Hanley. Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. I um, must declare an interest. I am a trustee of Overday Centre, and they are one of the applications is from that body. So I won't contribute to the discussion on that, I don't think. Uh, or, unless I'm told I'll probably, I think probably you can comment and not vote. That's correct, yeah. So you are able to take part in the discussion. But um, not vote. But not, not vote. And uh, uh, just uh, where, where have you discussed this item with uh, any of the other members um, of the organisation? No. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, anybody else? No, not unless you're directly involved with it. Yes, please. Okay. Any, any questions about the menu? Sorry, I didn't press the button. I would like to declare that I'm not a member of the Swavesea Parish Council, um, but I am aware of this application. Okay, thank you. And I have one which is um, a Melbourne Community Hub, and I'm a director of that, so my, my declaration is non-pecuniary. Um, if I, I can ask questions, answer questions on that, but I won't be taking part in the vote. Claire? Um, yes, Chairman, you, you're not always very clear when you're speaking. I think it might be to do with the screen. All oh, right. Thank you. Uh, agenda item number three. Okay, members, this is for the minutes of the last meeting, which was on 30th of April 2021, and that's on page one of your agenda pack. Could we go through that as normal, please? Which will be um, heads up for any corrections on page one and page two and page three. If that's okay, is that okay if I? Sign that off. Thank you very much. And okay, so now we're going to have a quick change for, for members of the public and, and others off out here. We're going to have a change of order at the moment. So we'll go to agenda item item number five, I think it is. Yeah, uh, six. Agenda item number six is the community chest funding applications. That's page nineteen of the agenda. Um, we have a, an officer who is uh, slightly delayed, so we're just doing a quick swap round. We'll just use his first, and we'll do the agenda items four and five last. Okay, so community chest funding applications. Vicky, is that that's your your good self? That is me. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Okay, I'm over, over to you then. Thank you. Okay. Um, good morning, councillors. Um, so, yes, we'll, we'll kick off with the the normal. Um, community chest applications, of which there are only three, um, to ease you all in gently. Um, the first one comes from the Hardwick Network, which was established in April 2020. Uh, it's a group of local volunteers offering support to the village um, during the COVID-19 pandemic. 
Um, the project is called the Hardwick Party, um, and this will be a community festival to be held in September. Um, and it's organised through a committee of representatives from various groups within Hardwick. Um, for example, the preschool, WI, parish council, sports and social club. Um, and the application comes from the, the Christian Fellowship, who are also part of that committee. Um, they want to have a party to celebrate the easing of the lockdown restrictions and bring the community together following the isolation that the pandemic brought with it. Um, now, they have stated that the, the cost of the project will be about £6,000. Um, but despite my request for, for more information on this, um, you know, a breakdown of the cost, they haven't actually got back to me with that. Um, they are asking for £1,000, but they have not detailed what they intend to spend that £1,000 on. Um, again, I've written to request this information. I had hoped it would be back before today, but sadly it hasn't. Um, Councillor Chamberlain does support the event. Um, he thinks it will be really good to get the entire village back together um, after the, you know, the last 18 months that we've all had. Um, and, and that's kind of it. It's a bit of a, uh, a sort of bare bones application and probably one that could fall in either, either part, more of a COVID one, I think, but it may apply through the normal route. So that's the Hardwick party. Okay, thank you, uh, Vicky. Uh, members? Claire? Um, I'm just wondering why it costs so much. Um, £6,000 is a large sum of money for a post-lockdown party, so that's my first question. Mm. Um, and unfortunately, breakdown of cost haven't been provided. Um, and also, I'm a little concerned that um, we don't know how, it, were we to grant £1,000, we don't know how that would be spent. So I think really, personally, I, I would like some more information. Thank you, Claire. Uh, Sue? I would agree with you. Um, I just feel that we don't have sufficient information. I think it looks like a really interesting and good project. And I, in, in no doubt, with more information, we will support it. But I really feel no at this point. Bill, the chair, I agree with Councillor Staunton Arlington. And yourself, Martin. Yeah. I do as well. Okay, thank you. Um, so, would members like Vicky to go back to the applicant and request the information again? Um, and, and we can perhaps bring that to the next next meeting if that's if that's acceptable to everybody. Yeah. Would that be okay, please, Vicky? We're going to decline yeah, it or defer it rather at the moment for further information. Um, yeah. But if you could express our our desire that the information is quite key to the yes. um, application. Yeah, I will thank, do. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you. Okay, moving on to Tevisham Colt Football Club. Um, we have support from Councillor Daunton for this project. Um, Tevisham Colt is a Camps FA affiliated football club offering football to 5 to 18 year olds. Established in 2005, currently has 21 members which they are intending to expand to 60 next season. Um, it's an integral part of the community, supporting children, encourages mental health and physical well-being, not only for the players but also social inclusion for volunteers, parents and families of those involved. Um, they've had some recent refurbishment work done to their pavilion. Um, the football club needs to purchase a storage container for, the, for their equipment while this, um, this work is ongoing. Um, this will, to have this container will mean that they can continue to allow youth football through, through the um, uh, pavilion refurbishment stages. The club do require planning permissions to site the unit. Um, at the time of writing this report, it wasn't sure if they actually had that planning. Um, but since the planning application, since this application, um, the planning permission has been granted for the full refurbishment of the pavilion.
but they were advised to take out this factor um, of the storage unit. Um, but they have since resubmitted that um, as a separate request. Um, the group have obtained a quote for a storage unit and that amounts to £2,500. Um, they have also applied for funding from clubs in crisis, but they have not stipulated, despite my request, how much they have applied for. Um, but they are requesting a full, the full grant of £1,000 to go towards their storage units. So thank you, Claire. Um, Claire, did you want to, to say anything on this? Um, yes, thank you. Um, I, I wanted to comment particularly on uh, the parish council. It said they're not providing funding as it's for the fo football club use only, but I would say that the parish council have put a huge amount of effort into the pavilion refurbishment and will be putting some funding into um, the project as a whole and have been very supportive of this. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Bill? No, I, my only comment was going to be that the Parish Council haven't supported it, but Councillor Daunton has just explained that, so I'm, I'm, I'm content. I, I'm content. I'm content with it. You're content with it. So. I, I just wasn't quite sure I understood exactly what Vicky was saying about the Planning Commission. They seem to have one lot of Planning Commission, but they need to get supplementary for this unit is that yeah, what that's i am correct yeah i see um, init initially they said that the planning commission included everything both the pavilion refurbishment and the storage unit um yeah. but for for reasons which i probably don't understand um the planning officers um advised them to submit them separately um so that's what they have done um i think it was to sort of expedite things for the pavilion um, I think maybe this held held things up, but but they have they they have applied for it, but it's not yet been granted. Um, my concern then would be that planning commission at the moment is taking an enormous amount of time, and they may not get it within the mm. time frame that they want to do the job. Um, that's my only area of concern in this one. My understanding in relation to this planning commission is that um, the, the the main application uh, for the pavilion um, was required in time for a grant's deadline, and it was the suggestion of the planning officers to separate out the two so that they have got the planning commission in time for the grant deadline, and then the separate application for the storage container was less time dependent. That's how I'd have understood it. One could have held up the other. The less, probably the, the less of the container is the lesser of the applications by, by far. Um, okay. Uh, Councillor Khan said you're content. Councillor Handley, Councillor Thornton and Ellington, how are you feeling? Content. Yeah. Okay, then, Vicky, that's then uh, unanimous content. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, oh, sorry, to... Vicky, Vicky, just I do apologise. Just before you, you start this, this is yep. the Melbourne Community Hub. As I'm a director of that, as I've declared an interest. Mm -hmm. uh, Sue, Councillor Ellington is going to, to take this if, okay. you, if it remains. Thank you. Thank you, Vicky. Lead okay, on. Um, so the Melbourne Community Hub, um, they are starting a community video project. Um, the Melbourne Hub has been in operation since April 2013. Um, it's a community centre providing full access to the community cafe, library, the parish council, the CAB, MIND, a lot of important institutions within. And they have public access to computers and free access to the internet. They, the project um, is that the, the hub is currently undergoing extensive refurbishment and is filming the process of these refurbishments with the intention to publish on their website as a record. During the process, they've decided that the, the, the record should be made, a continuing record should be made of the many events that the Melbourne Hub, Hub host and therefore the wider community can enjoy. 
um, such as the village of Ake, you know, things like the clubs and scouts do. And they'll make this, well, they want to purchase a camera and, and they'll make this available to those community groups to use. So the project, in essence, is to make all these video recordings of the several different groups recording their events so that a record is available for future generations. Um, they've provided quotes for the cost of the camera and, and a subscription um, for the camera. And, and yeah, it's, it's basically just to, to record and detail everything that, that, that goes on in Melbourne and the community hub itself. Um, I will add that the Parish Council does support um, I know Joe sent an email saying that they, they had provided support in, in the past, obviously they're based in, in the hub itself. Um, I think a colleague told me that they'd written to the parish council, but it's not clear if that actually, that actually happened, but I know that the parish council do support this project. Thank you, Vicky. Any comments? Bill? Um, yeah, I I think this is a project that I'm happy to support. Um, yeah, absolutely. Claire, thank you, Sue. Um, I, yes, I, I, I'm happy to support it. I, I, I would like to add that I think it's really important that something like this is kept for the future, um, for the archive, for historians. So I would like to ask uh, how they thought about how they're going to store it properly. Um, and how they're going to label it and who's going to know about it and in the long run whether they will be depositing it in the county archives. Um, I know that for future historians a record like this will be invaluable. Um, so I would, like to, I would like them to think about that and not make it a condition. I, you know, I do support it but I do think that's really important. And um, yeah, when they come back to us on how they've spent the money I think it'd be really nice to know um, how it's being stored, uh, particularly how it's being stored to preserve it. You're presumably just talking about the film itself. Yeah. My concern was around, um, have they got adequate um, people who know how to edit and uh, um, make sure that the documentation, as you say, is labelled so that people know what's on the film. It's lovely having a bit of film, but if you can't show it and know where to go on it to find the right bit, it can drive you mad. Yes. Sorry. Joe. Thank you, Chair. Um, right. Okay. This is it's actually, this, ha this happened purely because of the building extension to the, the, uh, the hub itself at the moment. So there's a, we've been filming with nobody in it. So there's a kind of a, like a time lapse, if you like, of the different sections of the process and some fly through video. And we were lent a GoPro, which is this ridiculous type of camera. It's very small and compact and easy to use and very robust. You can throw them around, apparently, and they don't break, which is handy, given the fact we'd like to be able to send it out to everybody else to use. Um, with regards to storage, and I'm hoping we have um, some experts within the community who volunteer at the hub and are part of the parish council, actually run their own advertising and internet company, which are running for running the editing and what have you. As far as storage, if you look at the subscription side of this on the internet, it's, that's part of the unlimited storage space within that product name, again, um, that's that part of their whole process, they can store it, but we're also storing it off site tonight. Uh, it will be displayed on the, the hub website and other websites as they start to take place. But obviously, we're not going to necessarily display the scouts, the scouts will be their own, so to speak, and the football club their own and, and what have you, but the kit will still be there for them to use. And with regards to the county archive and, and keeping it, I think it's absolutely a, a given that this is a historical record, a, a snap in time of what we've just suffered, if you like, the last 18 months and how we claw our way back out, so to speak. And I think, I think that's all the questions, is that all the questions answered? <clears throat> in terms of storage, you have to remember that uh, computer programs to uh, store digital material now seem to change every 10 years or so. So it, it can be 
they can store something which is more uh, flexible for changes in the system. So that would be very desirable. I think we're looking at mainly Clow, which is pretty flexible for the moment. So. What about things like, um, uh, say, torture? Because obviously you're going to be taking a lot of, I hate the word, but it does pop up fairly regularly. With regards to data protection, we have hardly had its own GDPR policy that we can go strict. Um, the proviso will be that the groups that use it deal with that themselves. It's not, we're not going to be storing their information or anything, so they will be then responsible for their own um, GDPR. And uh, with regard to uh, safeguarding them with small people, same applies here. The policies are exactly there, and it would only ever be with the express permission. And there's one of the things actually is quite interesting is that the, the hub does a thing called turn on to Christmas. Now, for those of you who have been to Merton Hub, um, you can swing a cat and bang one of its heads on one wall. It's not huge, but we can have four to 500 people on site at any time while Chris, on this Christmas thing, which is shoulder to shoulder, and obviously it's family. So we will be taking the measures to make sure that everybody is aware of, of how we're going about that. And, not filming if they don't want to be. Okay, thanks. Good chat. Thank you. Um, so, Claire? Oh, sorry, Sylvia. Um, well, really, this is a question for Jay, if, if I may. Um, for equipment <coughs> like this, do we always ask for them, it to be labelled as a, that we've made a, a donation, made a grant to it? I mean, I think we have tried to do that in the past, that we've asked for a, a, a note that hmm. ICDC has a little label. Yeah. yeah, we can add that as a condition. That's fine, and I'm sure that um, Council Hales will probably want to put something on the on the on the hub website that the new footage is is being uh, provided by a camera from from South Cam. So yeah, we we can do something. Okay, good idea. Thank you. Thank you. So, are we all in agreement? Those of Martin, Bill. And, and Claire and I am. So, yes. Thank you. Thank you. So, that's the end of the, the uh, standard community test applications. Um, did you want me to move on to the, the COVID one? Or yeah, if, if it's okay with uh, Sue, I'll take back the chairman. But yeah, thank, 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 thank you, sir. Yeah, please do. Agenda item number seven community test. Grant funding applications. This is the COVID. Yes? Yes. Thank you and very these much. These are the COVID, COVID recovery. So, um, Thank you. I hope you're, you. you're all sitting comfortably. I shall begin. <laughs> um, so, the first one we have the Connection Bus Project. Um, the project is to purchase and equip, equip a van to enable the earlier return of youth work services to South Cambridgeshire villages. Um, for over 20 years, this charity has provided youth work services across Cambridgeshire through the provision of a building-based and youth-based bus, bus, easy for you to say, and youth bus-based venues. Um, when lockdown came in, the end of March 2020, all the charity's activities had to cease, and staff looked at alternatives that would work in this setting. Um, the youth workers were trained in detached youth work and the babysitting course was moved online, but there was no alternative that provided a suitable replacement for the youth bus and, bus and youth club sessions that had previously operated. Um, as the government has announced the steps uh, to re reopening, the, the charity have recognised the extended need for youth services outdoors over the summer and want to split the youth club van into two stages. Um, so stage one is youth clubs on the van, where they want to purchase a van and basic equipment to allow it to be a base for detached youth work on community recreation grounds or other suitable places. Um, they would need equipment such as gazebos, uh, outdoor activities, lighting, um, hot drinks, 
um, information and advice for youth workers. Uh, stage two is youth club in a van um, and they need to add additional enhancements to the van to enable bespoke flight cases to be kitted out as youth club equipment. Um, this will allow the use of village venues with no equipment or storage, cheaper to run than a standard youth bus, allow provision in villages with no space for a youth, youth, youth bus, and will be use, usable before youth buses are allowed under COVID restrictions. The COVID restrictions have had a big impact on young people and the services they are able to provide. So the charity are looking to adapt what they can provide in order to link back into the communities that have not been able to access. Um, the total cost of the projects for stage one and stage two is £25,900. They have uh, received some funding um, from the Pi Foundation of 7000 and Garfield Weston have contributed 5000 Um have received an email from Councillor Hunt in support of the application. Um, I did email to ask how they will make up the additional costs and also about what the parish council will pay. But as yet, I've not received a, a reply. And they have applied for the full COVID grant of £2,000. I would just comment that uh, as a local member for Instant Linkington, I, I, I would support the application. And also, I on purpose telephoned uh, uh, Councillor Hailings last night and she supports the application as well. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. Councillor Handling. Thank you, Chair. I think this is quite an imaginative uh, project and um, I'm happy to support it, entirely happy to support it. Thanks. Um, yes, I, I had a, a, a project of my own which I'm working on which is similar, and I have been to talk to the uh, connection bus people. Um, one of the reasons that the connection bus fell out of favour with some of my villages was that the parish council were, were required to pay considerable amounts towards it, and they didn't necessarily feel that they were getting value for money because not enough young people turned up to use it, if you see what I mean. So one of my, well, I was thinking this is a really good project and I really have a great support for the whole idea. I just have not seen anywhere that it would indicate how much they're going to charge for its use if it visits um, a village. Uh, and that bothers me just a little bit but I think the project itself is excellent. Does anybody know? Vicky, have you got any more information on that? Um, I'll have a quick look at the form. I don't think they did stipulate Just bear with me. Because while you're looking, I, 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 I do bear out what Sue's just said, because we have Melbourne used to have a connection bus every now and then prior to a stable youth club. And the parish council were, were asking us to introduce Mellor to that heavily by comparison. Now, where it says um, about like membership and fees and stuff, they haven't they haven't answered that question. It's not just membership and fees, it's actually what the parish mm. councils, if it goes to an area or into a parish where there's a parish council, they ask to pay for that bus, or is it being funded from somewhere else? These are, they're not, they're not cheap mm. bang for youth workers as well, so this, yeah. is, this is for yeah. the hardware, isn't it? This is for like the bus and bits and pieces to go in it. This isn't, yeah. this isn't for the actual workers. So that, that there is a cost to that. It would be handy if they could actually perhaps provide even a, a flavour of, of how that might be. Would you agree? Yes, I would. Just having a quick look at their account to see if there was anything on there. Yeah. 
speaking personally to yeah. colleagues, I'm, I'm, I'm minded from my own personal point of view to say, yes, this is a, a, a good one, a runner of what it's going to deliver to the youth and what have you. But I'm just wondering whether or not we were to give officers the, the, uh, the go ahead to say, look, can, can you get me information? If they're satisfied that there is information on the back that on the, we can give off to officers, just so they're actually in the public, I mean, the parish council have the choice to fund it or not. Not here. It's just as long as it's in public and it's and it's, it's those details are there, we could perhaps say we approve on the proviso that officers get that information and they're happy with that, given they've, what they've heard us say. Would would you agree with that, members? I think um, uh, that it would be good. They've said, I think, that there are four villages that have expressed an interest. Um, but I really would like to know how much those four villages will have to pay and, and whether there is um, sufficient um, interest for, for a cost um, analysis. Um, and... and I am very happy to leave that to officers to to look at and bring back to us if they're not comfortable. Claire, um, yeah, so the charity um, funds the youth workers, that's correct, isn't it? So um, one assumes from this that there's no problem with funding for the youth workers. And so what we're being asked for is for funding for the equipment. I'm just that, that is an assumption that's built into the application, that there isn't a problem with the funding for the youth workers. I, th I tend to agree with you. I think perhaps if we, now that you've said that as well, Vicky and Jay have heard that, so they would just clarify that for us as well. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it would be just to have that reassurance that there's no problem with the funding for the youth workers that are going to be running uh, or using this equipment. Um, and my second question really is, um, one assumes that they have actually uh, been already been in touch with young people and found what kind of support that they're looking for um, post COVID. I mean, they talk about what's needed, um, but I assume that that is on the basis of evidence that they know they've already spoken to young people. Um, so those are two assumptions I'm making from the information that's provided here. Um, those are two comments. And then my other comment really is, is uh, agreeing with others, how are they going to make up the additional funding? Mm. It, it's the cost of the driver quite often in the evening. And um, obviously travel and uh, useful um, materials. Uh, so I, I think there is a substantial cost, um, apart from the youth workers that go with them. Okay, thank you. I just added, though, in, sure. I mean, in general, I would be very supportive of this, but I, I think we'd need some more information. Sure. I mean, are we, are, are we then minded, like, with the caveat of what we've all been saying, that officers have a duty to share out or hear our concerns? So are you okay with that, Vicky and Jay, that you could yes. just check those through and then... If you're satisfied, I think the general feeling amongst us is that we would approve. Thank you. Thank we'll just leave that with, in your, your uh, hands. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, on to our next one, um, which is Gamba Gray Parish Council. Um, their project is to hold a community event to celebrate the end of the restrictions due to the COVID-19 pand pandemic. Um, community freedom event will be held on, in July to celebrate the release from the restrictions imposed due to the pandemic. Um, the event will be largely outdoors, so a large marquee or covering will be purchased for the outside area, which will also make available to other community events in the future. And this will be stored at the eco hub the location is accessible to, to all and the event will be free for all to attend advertised widely in local publications and on social media and the project cost um, has been detailed and that totals uh, two thousand pounds and that is the amount that they would like to apply for 
Thank you, members. Claire? I'm just wondering why um, they have to spend a thousand pounds on hiring performers. Um, I assume these are sort of local bands or um, things which obviously during the pandemic have not been able to actually work. Um, so I'm, I'm probably, I mean, they have put on here, they've got musicians, actors, puppet shows um, that will appear, you know, things that will appear appeal to all ages. Um, I, I, I'm just making the assumption that given, the, you know, you know that the, the the fact that they've not been able to work, that they won't be able to um, do these events for free. It's an opportunity for them to get back into to working. Thank you, Vicky. John, Councillor Williams. Uh, yes, uh, thank, thank you, Joe. Um, I understand this is obviously, this is being organised by the Parish Council, but they're not contributing anything to it at all. Um, that's my only, um, yeah, I, I, I would have thought that they would, if this is such a great event that's going to be so important to the village, that they would also be putting their hand in their pocket and, and, uh, and support it. So I, I'm, I'm not happy that they are not supporting it in any way. Thank you. Yeah. John, John. I mean, it may be that they are. They've just not stipulated on their application. I assume there'll be costs for the hub, which obviously the parish council will be providing. But yeah, it's not been stipulated within the application itself. I think I know, I know a little about the. Oops, I know, I know a little about the hub, and the hub is an independent from the parish council. So I think it it may have some funding that comes from the parish council. Um, I do tend to agree with John. Perhaps this is another set, another another uh, application that should go back for a question to be made to the the uh, applicant to say is the parish council going to be putting any of these forward and if so, how much? Mm -hmm. It'd be quite good. Mm -hmm. so, um, I, it was the use of two different words that is um, making me question. The event will be largely outdoors, so a large marquee or covering will be purchased. And then we're talking about a gazebo that's six for three, which isn't what I would call a large marquee. So there's some variation in, in what we're talking about here, I think. I think that's uh, largely boils down to how big you are. Yeah. <laughs> that, 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 is, that, is, that is an anomaly. I mean, it, I, I suspect, again, this would be quite handy. This is a good point, right? But it would be quite quite handy. This is dummy now. I'm going to keep it all the way through now. Um, it's, it's quite handy, actually, to say we have a marquee which we'll put up, but we're buying a, a gazebo will be, yeah. which, as you say, the choice of language, because I know you can't buy a marquee of any size for 653. Right? So... No. <laughs> I so, mean, if I had, I, it may it may be that the parish council is um, is providing a marquee. You know, that could be their contribution, but it needs to say so if that's the case. I think the devil's in the detail again, isn't it? So, I mean, Claire, you wanted to speak again. Uh, yeah, I just want to make a general point. Really, I think that all of these um, events, these post-COVID events, really are important to the individual communities, and in, in theory. We should support them because they have a, a really important role to play in bringing people together, um, and and also there's a sort of mental, general sort of mental health role as well. Um, but I do think we need more information on this because we're being asked to pay for the whole amount. Um, I mean, I'm not saying it's not a good project, but um, yeah, th there are a few gaps I think. Um, I, I, I agree there's some gaps here. Um, the lack of parish council contribution is something of concern. I'm not sure whether perhaps this is something where we should be supporting, say, one element of the, of the, the request, for instance, hiring performers, because that's specifically 
when the, uh, the, the, the event started, which is now post-COVID, whereas the other elements are planned to be used over a long period of time, and therefore a capital investment for a longer time. Um, and maybe that's what we should think of, at least in the short term. I don't know. Very well. Unless we have more information to justify that uh, other spending has been done towards the project which has not been presented. Well, I think we're going to go back to Sally and Vicky on this one because when we, we first talked about this, and this came up at scrutiny, didn't it, for the, part of the, the COVID work, um, working party, that was one of the things about how to uh, re-energise uh, people and get them back out again. And I think then Jay and Vicky then became involved through that process. So I think the criteria has been somewhat relaxed for the COVID, I think, to, to, to the understatement. Um, so, Jay or Vicky, I don't know who wishes to, to, to speak. Jay, could you just give us a quick heads up as to whether you think we are barking up the wrong tree? Yeah, thanks, Councillor Hales. Um, now, I just wanted to also just remind councillors that uh, we can partially fund any of these applications as well. So, if you particularly felt that the parish council could have contributed, then a perfectly acceptable solution would be to fund the project to a lesser amount and expect the, the parish council to contribute the rest. I wanted to make that that point clear. Thank you. Bill? Yeah, Jay makes a good point, um, but, but it's all, my views on this has, has always been expressed by the other members of, the, of this group. Um, I, I was uncomfortable, uh, you know, covering 100% of, of this if there's no self-help or local sponsorship. So my view would be that um, I'd, like to, I'd like to support it completely, the £2,000, but I would like evidence, to see evidence that there's local support as well, financial support, whether it's from the parish or from businesses or whatever. Okay, so are we looking at um, another officer intervention? Do you think, to go back, to, if we can go back to... The, uh, the applicant and say, well, it's Melbourne, Par oh, Melbourne it's Gambling Gay Paris Council. So go back to the Paris Council and say, what you put it in. Um, it, it, there was no requirement for match funding, to be fair, was there? If I recall, right? So there, there is that slight sticky sticking point. You didn't, re you didn't specify there will be match funding requirements from the parish, but it would just be kind of nice, perhaps, or even to stipulate their costs that aren't shown here that they've just not bothered to put down. I mean, that might be the other way of doing it, and so that there is there is funding so or some other means of support. So with that in mind, if officers are content that those questions that we've, and our concerns have been met, are we okay to approve on that basis? Agreed. That's a, that's a yes from everyone, please, Vicky. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, so our next one is from Cottenham Parish Council. Um, it is for COVID safety enhancements at Cottenham Village Hall. Um, the Parish Council wish to purchase nine freestanding wheeled clear plastic COVID screens to place between different groups of users within the Village Hall. Um, they have detailed the, the project cost, which totals £1,493. Uh, and again, similar to the last application, the Parish Council have not stipulated that they have contributed financially to this project. So it's for the purchase of these plastic screens, safety screens. Before I go to you, Bill, can I just ask a question, Vicky? Is this, mm -hmm. is this the, the, um, the, the, the village hall? On the high street, the the former church, the Methodist church, where their community cafe is. Let's have a quick look. Don't know Campbell, uh, Cotton particularly well. The address. Because that's where the parish council reside as well. And in the back, there's quite a mistake on an extensive array of rooms and what have you. And mm. so they've said it. Uh, they've just detailed their parish office. Oh, yeah. Parish office, Cotton Village Hall, Recreation Ground, Lambs Lane, Cotton. Right. Okay. Not, not the one in town. Not the same. No. Okay. 
not the old jerk, it's, uh, it's the other lane going down from the hospital surgery towards uh, Rampton to in the arms out of Hockley. Where they had the elections, don't they? Yeah. Bill. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Um, I, I think this is another one where it appears that there's no support from the parish council, correct me if I'm wrong, um, but I do think this is a slight, this is a different kind of thing because, you know, previously it was like a party, give us the money. <laughs> uh, but this is, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, f fair enough. Um, this is, this is some, this is a, 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 an attempt to put protective barriers in place to, to encourage the use of the building. And I think that's a very suitable way of using this money. So I'm fully supportive. I have to say, I have the same opinion. This is, I mean, given the news this morning that the 21st of June is starting to look a bit dubious, um, and then it's doubling of the, the variant. So, uh, yeah. So, my only question is are not village halls receiving substantial grants to actually be able to provide these? screens and, and protections and so on. It's about £8,000. Um, and I just wonder whether this is duplicating um, grant funding. Yeah, that was my question, actually. And, and it's a question to the officers. Um, mm. the, uh, the, the village halls have been eligible to apply to for grants throughout the um, COVID pandemic because of loss of income um, and also to help them under the restart grants to get going again. So I just wonder if there's some duplication here, maybe Jay knows that, or maybe John and Councillor Williams. Um, thanks, Councillor Dawson. Um, I think we have obviously lots of applications this month and I think we need to just base each case on its own merits. And I assume if they're applying for funding from this grant scheme, then I would assume they haven't been successful for whatever reason in grant funding for another scheme, or they've used that money for something else. So we can go back and find out more information, and you can defer this um, this case if you wish. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't expect um, them to apply um, to two grant schemes for the same thing in my opinion, but as I say, we can't, we're more than happy to go back and clarify that if we feel that's really important. Should we ask officers to go back and make the, not ask the question? Yeah. I would be happy. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Um, can I just come back to Jay? I, I wasn't at all implying that they were you know, applying twice for the same thing. I was just wondering whether you know, another grant uh, stream might be more appropriate for this kind of thing, that was all. Of course, we will explore that with them. And if there is no other method of them getting any money for these these screens, then we will bring it back to the next committee. Thank you. Well, rather than, as I would say, rather than bring it back, because if it does open up, if the, if the restrictions aren't going to be um, suspended, passed for me, rather, um, on the 21st of June, they're going to need this sooner rather than later. So, if if everyone's in agreement here, if you if you get the right answers, you're in, Jay and Vicky. Then we're 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 happy for that to go ahead and be granted. And John John's nodding at the thing. Okay, Vicky. Okay, just make a note of that so I don't forget. Okay. Um, the next application is from, excuse me, I've lost myself, um, Northstow Secondary College. Um, they have applied for support with their Northstow R pavilions. Um, they had a successful bid and been awarded four architect design pavilions, and they were previously installed outside the junction in Cambridge and used as art installations. Now, they hope to erect these pavilions between Northstow North Secondary College and Martin Beacon Academy and use them with 
um, art projects and provide a launch pad for inclusive community and school-based art groups that will benefit the communities of North Stone long standing, long standing. It's, um, they describe it as a good opportunity to kickstart engagement with art and provide an opportunity for making activities, place making activities and allow students from the North Stowe Secondary College and Martin Beacon Academy um, Special School to work collaboratively with local community artists from the new town and existing villages. So the cost of this project is 24,000 in total. They have got funding from elsewhere and they are looking for the full grant of £2,000. Um, they haven't asked for support from the Parish Council. Um, district councillors have been contacted but have yet no reply. Thank you, Vicky. Now, so before I go to the floor, there's one person I'm looking at who loves the arts. So <laughs> I suspect there's going to be a comment on the arts, and I, I have to say I kind of think this is... Indeed. That would, I'm sure I speak for Councillor Khan as well. That I'm sure that that would be our first comment, that, yes, it would be great to support something for the arts. Uh, but obviously there's a question here about um, uh, the... Academy Trust and um, our, the fact that we're not allowed to support um, uh, direct, give direct support to education, uh, institutions of education like this. So um, I'm just thinking that, um, do we have sufficient information about community engagement here? Um, I mean, I think we do, um, but I'd like to hear what other people think. I mean, I think in principle, it's a great idea and it would be good to have more of these kinds of things across the district. But um, I've just got some questions about uh, whether or not we should support this kind of thing. OK, thanks. I'd say just for clarification then, Joe and Vicky, under normal circumstances, the community just wouldn't entertain Parish Council making an application, unless it's one of the very small ones, um, and we wouldn't touch education either. However, I understand that directory conditions for application have been relaxed, certainly by Parish Council, and I'm looking to John as well for this as well, but for a steer. Um, this is something which is outside of the, of the, the actual school itself, it's actually in, in, the, in the public arena. So it's accessible to all. It's just the schools are actually providing the arbor by the looks of it. So could you give us a steer as to whether or not this is a, a no-go from the word from the start? Thanks. If I could go first, please, Councillor. Okay. Okay. If that's yeah. right, John. Um, yeah, so just in my opinion, um, I think this project is okay because what we'd normally say is that we can't provide funding for projects that should have otherwise be funded by another entity like a school, for instance. So we wouldn't be able to buy pencils for a school because they should have already bought them themselves, if you see what I mean. This project, to me, feels like it's a, a project in itself over and above what the normal school would, would be offering. Um, and like you say, with these COVID recovery grants, the rules are slightly relaxed and this does appear to be something that is mentally stimulating and will help uh, people in their mental recovery after COVID. That is my opinion. Thank you. Yeah, I, I agree with what Jay said. I think um, in this case, it was a special case. We have to relax the rules a bit because, um, you know, we, because we recognise that um, we can't apply the same strict rules for, for these sort of things. And I'm, I'm quite content with um, going ahead with this one, um, obviously, if the, if the committee agrees. OK, Phil? Uh, Councillor Williams is content. Um, I'm, I'm more than happy to, uh, to approve this myself. I'm, I'm, I'm reaching delirium. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we, we're all, we're all uh, approving that. Thank you, Vicky. Thank you. Super. OK. On to the next one. Um, Ickleton Parish Council. 
um, they would like to create well an, an area to place a community outdoor table tennis um, table. Um, they want to create an active space for sport, movement, fresh air and community re-engagement through an out outdoor table tennis table. They feel as a community that something simple and accessible to all that is outside will be an excellent vehicle for younger people to meet and engage with each other in a safe outdoor environment as the pandemic risks fade. Um, the vision is for informal games as well as regular relaxed club type activities around the table. Um, a grant of £2,000 will help many elements of the community reconnect with each other and importantly do so in a self a safe, healthy outdoor space. They've detailed the costs um, there. It costs in total 2750 so they're seeking a full grant of £2,000. Um, we have district councillor support from councillor MacDonald. Parish Council do support the project um, and they have previously invested um, quite a considerable amount of money in other outside space improvements. That is the Ickleton outdoor table tennis. Thank you, Vicky. The, the one question that springs to mind is there 750 quid short? Yeah. So has there any indication on where that might be coming from or is that? They haven't indicated that, um, but they're saying that they, this, you know, this £2,000 will help towards the cost. So I, I would assume that they're, they're funding that additional themselves. Thank you. Martin. I see £50 for bats. Now, any disturbance of bats, you get involved in quite complicated uh, legal implications in terms. Um, I'm not quite sure how having an outdoor table tennis table affects bats, but I was just interested in that. What the, the justification for that cost is? I have a sneaking suspicion that it's the table tennis bat. Yeah. My apologies. <laughs> no, it's, it, this, is, this is great, because we can see it all creasing up on the screen. It's lovely. <laughs> it must be going a bit batty. Uh, um, unless, this, unless their members are uh, in absolute uh, against, against this, right? can you say oh, this is approval? Yeah. <laughs> Especially for the bats. <laughs> Thank you, Vicky. Next one, please. Thank you. It's only, it's only, that was only number five. <laughs> right. Okay, Shepherd, Shepherd Spitfires Football Club are a, a community group and they are looking to purchase some new football goals for their under 13s. Um, they do have quite a large membership of 140 and they usually charge £50 per year for, for membership and they do also do a lot of fundraising. They had intended to fundraise themselves for these goals, but due to the lockdown, they've obviously not been able to get together and do any events for fundraising. Um, so they're looking to purchase these new goals for their, their club, for boys and girls that they have at their club. Um, and their, their, their football club itself has participants from a number of villages within South Cams, and they are seeking um, just shy of 1800 pounds to, to pay for the cost of the new goals. Thank you, Vicky. I'll give you, I'll give all the members some background, shall I? We have two, yes, yes. two large football clubs. We have the Melbourne Dynamos, which have been going uh, considerably longer than the Spitfires. But this is a bit like Man United and Man City in these two. They are cutthroat <laughs> in the league. <laughs> so it's I actually quite welcome this, actually, because uh, Spitfires are new. Melbourne uh, Dynamos have got quite a substantial following, in my view. So from my point of view, I think this could only be a good thing. They are a growing club. The, they, as you say here, they, they do a lot, as do the other, the other football clubs as well, to be fair, um, support people who are unable to pay for their, their uh, subscriptions and that. And so I think it's quite good. Thanks. I think this is a good project and the information is, is interesting and it looks as if they're um, 
they work hard to keep the club going. Um, do we know, you're waiting still a response from the parish council. I mean, do we, do we have any indication at all that they would be supportive? No, there's not, nothing, nothing within the application. We're not requiring it, are we? But it would be nice to know if they were. We're not requiring it. From from my uh, attendance at the meeting, the parish is that they are uh, they have actually have a report. So it's a, a monthly report from the fifth ward to the parish council. So it's quite a public process. Are we content? As a, as a yes from us, please, Vicky. Thank you. Okay, on to the next one. This comes from Camborne Church. Um, their project is to provide mental health training for frontline members of the, the Camborne community. The church wishes to offer training to those of their volunteers who are most likely to meet residents who have mental health challenges. Um, so it will yeah, include training for the volunteers at the community cafe and those working in the Camborne Food Bank and those who work with families and young people in the Camborne and the church staff team who are often and frequently approached by residents, um, especially at the moment during the current times of crisis. And they wish to train approximately 18 of their members in the level two and three mental health first aid training and that is a cost of £1,830 and the parish council have contributed £300 towards this. So we have support from Councillor Clayton and oh no, Councillor Bhattachara and they both support this and obviously the parish council do support it in principle as well as financially. Thank you, Vicky. Church. Members, I think this fits, frankly, fits the bill to the to a T. Bill? Yeah, agreed. It's uh, it, it's just what this this sort of uh, this is just the sort of project that this is intended to. It's a Anybody else? So I agree. I think it's good. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Martin. Agreed. No, no. That's a that's a yes from us again, please. Thanks. Lovely. Thank you. Okay, um, over day centre. Um, the project is for the reopening of the day centre. <coughs> um, a grant of £2,000 would enable the day centre to reopen without incurring um, too much of a financial loss. Um, they are currently operating with insufficient clients to even break even. So the over day centre or normally um, would have about 56 members, a charge of £23 day, a day to attend. Um, so obviously they're looking to offset that, that cost with a grant to enable them to reopen without having to worry too much about the financial implications of doing so. Um, obviously Councillor Handley has a conflict um, and it's not been clear if the parish council have supported this or not. So that's in it, this overday centre's application. Thank you, Vicky. Uh, go over to you, please, Councillor Handel. Yeah, first of all, apologies that I didn't get back to you um, when you contacted me. Uh, I, I do support it. Obviously, I am a trustee of the, of the overday centre. Um, I'm, I'm just going to speak in support of this, as I'm allowed to do. Uh, obviously, won't I'll slip to the loo when you vote on it. <laughs> um, uh, the day the day centre has suffered financially through the, the COVID because they've fallen between stools on some of the grant funding that other um, other institutions have been able to, to to get. They don't they don't pay business tax basically, and they're a charity. So some of the um, some of the grant funding which uh, demands that you, you you are a business tax. Pay or they, they just haven't they haven't been eligible for so they have been they have been struggling. Mm -hmm. I would say that they've done a huge amount for the community over the coming uh, the, over the pandemic um, by providing food and the volunteers and the staff have worked um, 
for free to turn out loads of food for people. And so if, if ever an organization deserves support, it's the Over Debt Centre. And uh, if you'll excuse me, I'll... Thank you. Just before, as you, as you go, Bill, you can nod. Um, this was the, the meal scheme for the Sunshine yeah. Shelf. Yeah. Yeah, that was hugely successful. Okay. Members, any comments? Um, I, I, I just wondered, in terms of the principles of just paying off basically the, the deficit, whether that's something that we should be allowed to do, rather than paying for something specific like the salary of uh, one of the people involved in running the day centre for a period of time. Um, it's the way that it's, that might be exactly the same sum and it might have the same effect, but I'm wondering about the way that it's presented. Um, I'd ask the advice on that. Um, over to Jane and Vicky. I kind of see where Martin's coming from. Um, perhaps this is a very honest application mm. down to the last, the last letter. And I think the fact that where Bill was saying that they've done so much through the whole of the last 15, 18 months of support into the community, they're probably exhausted, frankly. Um, so writing an application was at the least of their, uh, <laughs> their concerns. I'm looking at John now to see whether or not he's content because I'm, I'm minded to be. Uh, and I think I'm looking at my colleagues as well to be, be content. I, I'm, I'm, I, can I ask Bill um, why they haven't applied for um, a grant? And, you know, we talked about grants earlier. This, to me, would seem to be an ideal uh, a, a application to, um, because of your loss of, of fees because of COVID, that, that you would apply for a grant um, to, to reimburse you for those loss of fees. Um, I'm not sure this is the right, what I'm saying is I'm not sure if this is the right place to come um, for that money. So those those grants, uh, John, are they still available to Ovar? I don't know. I don't know if Jay knows. I think uh, I think Bill covered that when I don't think it gets treated as a business, the Over Day Centre. So I don't believe they're qualified for any of the business related grants that were okay. and still are being handed out. Okay, but but under but isn't this 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 is this not a village hall? Is this not a come under the don't believe so unless bill's got any further information sorry i don't i don't it's, no, know it's what they it's have and haven't done so far in regard to that sorry yeah it, uh, all i can tell you is that what i've been told by the um in our, our finance trustee that, that uh, they have i think they have received some grants but nowhere near the level that you know a business might if it, if it if it was a business paying business rates it would have received a, a lot more uh support yeah because what the, the problem i've got with this um bill is that you're not actually doing anything new you, you you're not actually um doing something like, you know th th this idea was to get people to get them back on their feet by you know doing something um in addition to what they would they were already doing or what they were already doing John. Um, i i do find it i have a difficulty with this i'm sorry because what we seem to be doing is refunding you loss of fees and i'm not sure that was the purpose of this um of this grant i don't know but jay would jay can maybe find a <laughs> A way that this does apply, but I, that's, that's how I feel at the moment. I don't see here anything that says to me that over that the over day center is going to is doing something in addition to what it would normally do to help people back on their feet or to help the community back on its feet. This is basically about repaying them lost earnings. And I'm not sure this is what this 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 fund is about. And there might be other ways of getting that money. Thanks, Councillor Williams. Um, yeah, so we purposefully left the the criteria for this grant really 
uh, really open. So really, it's up to the committee today to make a choice. There is no right or wrong. It's just whether they feel they they should fund this. And we did say that the fund was for getting people back out and about after COVID. And, and so in my mind, I do feel uh, bringing people back into the uh, stimulating environment, which they've been used to having and not had access to for so long, will help with particularly those 56 people who attend and their uh, recovery from COVID. You know, it must be awful have, you know, attending a day centre several days a week with all your friends and then suddenly to be stuck in your house for a year and a half. So I do, I do see where they're coming from in the application, actually getting their people, you know, back out and about again, um, especially the type of people they're looking after. Um, but really down to committee, this one, what, whatever you guys decide. Before I come to Vic and John, I, I'm, I'd like to chuck my hat in the ring on this one. I think right the way from March last year, the, the, the OVA centre came up, daycare centre came up in conversation constantly, especially through here with the, the meals programme and what have you. It was a significant um, input into the, the support, if you like, of the community through that period. And I, I, take, I take your point, what you're saying, I really do. Um, to, but I think uh, Bill mentioned earlier, he said that, uh, and I think Vicky read this out, that they, they're, they're not able to have the full extent open be, without some kind of support, I suppose, really, is what you're looking at. And if we want to get, as Jay says, everybody back into some kind of normality, then there is going to be an issue. So I, I just wonder if on this particular... I would, argue, I would argue in favour of, of what you've just said, John, if you like, and agree with you, if OVA hadn't been so instrumental in the support right the way through first and second lockdown, I think it was, wasn't it, Bill? Yeah. Right, I mean, they have been instrumental in a huge number of, of, of meals and what have you. So, from my, my heart is probably playing better than my head on this one. But I think this what is... This Sorry, sorry, Dirk, but what do you say to other British halls who would come to us and say, we've had a loss of earnings, can you make it up? Because this is, in effect, what we're doing here. I, I mean, John, I, 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 um, I, I respect your view on this, and, you know, I, I, I'm not arguing, but it, it, it's not actually a village hall. That you, I don't, you, you know the day centre, it's actually a... It's attached to Elm Court Sheltered Housing, sheltered, uh, yeah, which is a, a council, uh, it's a council building. Um, so, it, it, that, but no, look, you know, if that's your view, it's ultimately your your decision, well, look, well, and there'll no, be no hard feelings over this at all. It's this, this way that, yeah. that, you know, as, you know, Jay is a sort of good argument, I think, to say that this is, Without this money, you cannot uh, help people back um, who need that support. And, and I think that's, that's perfectly acceptable. It doesn't actually say that in this um, application. But if that's, if that's what the intention is, I mean, it says basically you're short of 11 clients to break even. Um, what attempts are you making to 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 make up that number? Because obviously there must have been you must have had those clients in the past, otherwise you 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 would you wouldn't have you wouldn't have been operate you know you wouldn't have um, balanced the books. So I I don't see anything you know it looks like it's a <clears throat> um, you're you're short of eleven clients. Um, this is how much you're going to lose um, for, I don't know, X, X number of, I think it's £23, 20 working days per month. So you're looking at a month's loss of earnings, I assume. Doesn't say anything here, Bill, how that's going to be resolved. Yeah, John, it's fair comment, um, and perhaps we could um, ask for further information from the from the trustees rather than say no. 
uh, just to ask for further information. I, that would be probably the best the best way to, to tackle this. Um, if I can just uh, just say what just to explain one final thing as to why they're having particular problem reopening. Um, a high proportion of their clients have dementia. Some of them really severe dementia, and they don't. Um, Basically, they don't sit down and stay put. They move around. So social distancing is actually very difficult. Uh, if, they, if they were able to uh, rely on the clients doing what they, you know, respecting the social distancing rules, it, it, it wouldn't be so bad. But uh, it's a particularly difficult one for the day centre because of that. Before I come to Sue, can I go to Vicky? Because Vicky's been waiting patiently there for us to look up here. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, I, I mean, it was just sort of saying again what, what Jay said, that the day centre and, and, and what Bill said, that the day centre is is not a village hall. It's a, it's a, probably I didn't detail it properly when I first presented, but it's a place that offers respite for families who are caring for perhaps elderly relatives with dementia um, and somewhere for these, these people to go um, to have a, a sense of, you know, independence, um, those that aren't, you know, quite severe with dementia, and, and just a place to socialise and interact and and do things. And I know um, how important it is to, to those families and and individuals that use it. Um, also, they've been, as as Councillor Hale says, they've been really, really pivotal in the in the chilled meal scheme for their volunteers delivering um, around over, and we are looking to stop those schemes at the end of June. Um, so those residents and individuals that haven't been able to attend a centre have been able to still benefit from at least one meal a week. Um, so to offer them support with reopening will hopefully encourage them back um, to use the centre. And I, I know that there's probably still, I mean, this might just give them a bit of respite themselves to encourage people to come back because people are going to still have those concerns about actually going back outside into the community. So that's just kind of what I wanted to add to that. Thank you, Vicky. Says. Who's going to help him? <coughs> uh, I, I seem to have raised the hornet's nest here. Actually, I mean, I'm very, I'm very supportive of this uh, in principle. It's just the way that it's been presented. Uh, that's the thing that worries me. Um, and I should explain that I have a, a child with a, a son with cerebral palsy in Swansea who has been living, uh, who goes, who used to go to a day centre every day, uh, a few days a week. Um, he's a similar situation. He's very difficult to control. He's liable to wander everywhere. And he's not been able to get back. He, every time I phone, he says, when can I go back? So I see the real, you know, this is, he's desperate to go back. There's a real need for this. I can see that. The, the question is how it's presented. And the way it was presented here, the fact that they cannot manage the clients normally because of the way they behave and therefore, uh, uh, and the effect, trying to create it COVID safe. That seems to me a good justification. Yeah. And that, you know, that's an argument that one could say, well, this is additional cost, this is additional effect, therefore we can support it. So it's really the way the thing is presented that worries me, uh, and I will be quite happy to support it if they can present to the officers a way that is satisfactory, that it's been presented to them, that they uh, they can support it. Uh, and, and I'll be quite happy to delegate it to the officers concerned. But um, it's, it's, that's really the only concern. I, I don't want to set a precedent that you just we always subsidise a deficit in an organisation. It has to be additional and related to COVID. Thank you, Martin. One of the most important things about overday centre is that, as Bill says, most of these clients have dementia. And it's not only the clients at the day centre that benefit. It is their carers. Have you thought how awful it is to have somebody with dementia asking the same question 50 times an hour and not have any respite and over the last lockdown period. 
And so, and it's also not that they're short of 11 residents, it's the residents, the, the people are available to go, it's the social distancing restrictions which are preventing them being able to go. The, the collecting them um, uh, from their homes and taking them to the day centre also has to be social distanced and spread over a much greater time span with more driver costs. It is the whole package that is so important. And I would go along with Martin and say, I think this is crying out for us to support it. Um, Jay, you've got your hand up. Um. Thanks, Jen. Um, yeah, just, just to address two points that John rightly made was, um, one thing is that we won't be setting a precedence because this is a this is a one-off uh, session. This is just a one-off session, so there is there are no more sessions. So from next month, we're back to the original community chess rules. And the other thing I wanted to say was um, that if you wanted a, a kind of a good solution, could be because I do understand John's point of view about you know covering the gap. If you wanted, I could work with the Over Day Centre finance uh, person just to double check that they have uh, applied and been granted every other possible grant they could get towards that. And then if it turns out after that process, they actually have applied for everything and they're still in a deficit, then we, we could use this fund. That was just an alternative solution I thought I'd propose. I think that's the solution, John. You happy with that? Yeah. So in, that. in principle, I'm looking at my colleagues here, and it's, an, it's a unanimous from us. And we'll leave this in the capable hands of Jay and Vicky uh, and to work out the finer details. Is that OK? Can, can, I, can I thank you, J uh, Jay, for that offer? That's, um, that would be very, very welcome, I'm sure. No problem. Thank you. OK. Then moving on. <coughs> Excuse me. The Friends of Bloom Dyke and Ronan Road, which is a community group. Um, so they were set up in 2001 and they helped to raise money to protect and extend the best wildlife areas on the two sites in Bolsham and Fulborn. And they also raised awareness amongst the local community. Um, Excuse me, I lost my chain of thought completely. So the, the Fleam Dyke is a scheduled mon monument and site of specific scientific interest. Maintenance of the this chalkland, chalk grass and flora requires regular mowing and scrub re removal, which is usually done annually. Um, this is normally done by a volunteer group, um, but unfortunately, because of COVID, this group has been able to unable to meet and as a result the banks on both sides of the footpath have become increasingly overgrown with scrub and brambles for a length of 400 metres with elder trees growing, growing up from the ditch. They're looking to use the, the grant to fund six days work applied which will be done by Hunt's Wildlife Landscapers um, which, if awarded, the Friends of the Ronan Road and Fleam Dyke will also um, put in £2,000. So they will be paying for six days' work from the, the contractors and then they'll put in another 2000 so they can actually extend the, the work to 12 days. Um, this wasn't in the initial application, so I did query that. It was a bit confusing because they, they said everything was going to cost 4000 but the quotes provided only equated to 2,100. But in essence, they'll do more work if, if they can, if they're successful with the grant. So essentially, it's just to improve the spaces and the footpath and the wildlife around it, which can then be you know, enjoyed fully by the communities around there. Claire, thank you. 
that I would say that this is a really important area for recreation in the Colborne and Borsham area. And during the whole of, of the pandemic, it's been very, very well used for people going out for daily walks. Um, and I take on board the fact that the volunteers haven't been able to, to work and the effect of that on the both on the wildlife and on the, the whole area. So I will be very supportive of this. Um, I take the point that Vicky's made about the, um, the ambiguity, ambiguity of the £4,000, and I think that's worth checking up on. But in general, um, I'm very supportive of this. I think it's, it's really important to maintain uh, these areas. I mean, I think one thing that was missed here is that it currently has 211 members who will now be able to go out and do what they love to do on behalf of us all. So, you know, um, are we, oh, sorry, Sue. Um, I just wanted to question why it is that the Wildlife Trust have decided that this is not one of their top priorities. And this would only be a one-off payment just to get, perhaps re redress some of the damage that's been done over the COVID period. But I just wondered whether there was a long-term plan to ensure that this is ongoing. I, I wonder, actually, that, that, that one of the things that has seemed to be very prevalent because of COVID, the effect of charities and all the, all the, the wildlife trust I imagine it's not escaped it is the revenue stream that they, they would have had during the year normally would have been able to fund this anyway so I would I would hope hope that um our grants might be able to do what it's meant to do and that relieves the pressure on the main charities that often then they can come back perhaps in the in the next year to carry on as normal it's probably worth a check up I suppose but are we content that it's We've got uh, 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 approved. Yeah, so that's uh, unanimous again, Vicky. If you just, you. would you mind just checking up on those bits that Sue raised? And, and yeah, yeah. I mean, they did say in their application that the Wildlife Trust has, you know, due to other financial pressure, has been able to make not been able to make this area a priority. And yeah, it's in the condition it's in because they've not been able to do their annual volunteering. Um, to sort of keep everything maintained, but I will um, double check those those areas with them again. It's approved from our point of view. It's just that you can be satisfied yep. that we've got the grant. Yeah, could, could I just make a point? Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, so it, I guess it is worth. I, it, I think Sue's point is really important. It is worth asking them about their long term commitment. Um, mm -hmm. You know, now that it, 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 obviously this is paying for hunts, wildlife landscapes to come in and do a one off. But what is the long term commitment to maintaining this? I mean, otherwise, it's money down the drain. Oops. I will check that with them. Okay, uh, on to uh, our next a one. Further, a further comment. Sorry. That, uh, that this is a site of special scientific interest, of uh, high interest. Um, there will, will be a management uh, agreement um, specification about what they should be doing, so this is clearly within that. Um, so you might ask them whether they're going to be looking for the longer term for other grants, say from Natural England or, or what other scheme, because the, it would seem to me that this is part of what they should be doing in any case in, in, for, the, for the, the wildlife interest. But uh, at this point in time, I'm happy. Yes. Well, well we're very happy because we all voted just now. So, okay, <laughs> crack on. <laughs> Thank okay, you. Vicky. Thanks. Um, so, our next application comes from Cambridgeshire Older People's Enterprise, otherwise known as COPE. Um, their project is for a sing along cafe. Um, COPE is a charity that's been established since 2003. Um, they look after the interests and well being of all those people living in Cambridgeshire over the age of 50. We're, they provide social activities and outings, which were obviously cancelled last year. Um, and telephone discussion groups are arranged 
all times of year called Talking Together. So they want to start a sing-along cafe, which means that older people could re meet um, at least once a month and socialise and sing along to familiar songs. It has been found that singing, singing helps dementia, as individuals can often remember words of the song, but not necessarily other words. And they're hoping that perhaps this could develop into a choir. They have stated that there is high demand for this provision. Um, they are, however, yet to identify a village where the first cafe could be established, but Water Beach or Bar Hill are thought to be suitable venues. Um, anyone can join, it's available to all. The only issue is the size of meeting place or halls limited, lim limiting the numbers possible. They will initially ask for donations and maybe have raffles to, uh, to help with funding. They will promote through their COPE newsletter, councils, libraries, community centres, GPs, clinics, etc. Um, they've detailed the cost of the project, which comes to a total of 1,470. However, they are only asking for £1,000 towards this project. Right. Thank you, Vicky. Yeah, I mean, the question yeah. begs, have they... Have they got themselves in a muddle? Because this is in the COVID uh, mm. restart, and so then it would have covered the full fourteen hundred and seventy pounds if this was about to start. Yes. So, I'm just wondering: have they have they just assumed this community chest or just read the wrong bit and put in the thousand? It's quite possible. I know the form was amended at a bit of a rush, so it wasn't all it wasn't completely clear. Yeah. But they did select that this to be a COVID. Because they're, they're not talking about any other, the, the 470 they're short, they're not talking about other than a few donations here and there and a raffle, they're not talking yeah. of any other contribution or support. And I suppose the, the obvious thing here is that this is, this is what this is about anyway, very much so. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking at John, I know he's going to grimace at me for saying what I'm about to say, but is this the sort of thing that we would go back to our officers and say, look, have you made a mistake with this? Should you have applied for the 1470 um, to, to get this up and running and to get going? And then any of the donations and contributions they get after that helps to keep it going further on. So is that a smile, John, or is that a grimace? I would like to suggest that we ask them how, they, how they're going to make up the difference. And then if they haven't thought of that, then offer to the full amount. Excellent choice of language, John. It could well be that, that they didn't ask for the full amount because they have other sources. So let's not, you know, let's not jump the gun. No, that's but, fine. I was just, when I was, okay. I was jumping the gun, it was if, if they haven't, you're absolutely right. This is the sort of thing that, that we were expecting. And, uh, and I'm sure you're looking forward to the sing-along, Joe's. Absolutely, the, uh, I'll be the, the headline act. Right, Jay, Vicky, would you would you kindly ask those those questions in, of course, in yeah. such a manner as to help them to the right answer? No problem. Yes, can they please come back to us and let us know when the first sing-along takes place and whether it's in Water <laughs> Beach or Bar Hill. Yeah. Or somewhere in between, yeah. I look forward to it. And, and it's interesting, just as I, just a, a small point, I mean, the music, the pianist, musician, £40, it's very modest, isn't it? I mean, very mm -hmm. modest indeed. Am I to assume then, colleagues, that's a, a yes from us, pending the, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, next one is from Elkisley Parish Council. Um, they are hoping to mark the installation of their new um, play equipment, um, combining that with a post-COVID party for the whole community and community groups. So they've recently had a new play area installed, um, which the parish council gave a considerable sum of money towards. And they are looking for £2,000 towards the 
party to celebrate the installation of this and also celebrating post COVID. But again, no costing detail despite an email requesting this information. Thank you, Vicky. Any comments, please, from members? Claire? Yeah. Um, well, uh, I think that we need the detail. Um, and also, £2,000 for a street party seems a lot of money. Because normally, street parties, the food and drink, you know, when people bake and um, bring things, you know, to help us along. So, it does seem an awful lot of money. In any case, I think that we definitely couldn't make a decision without a further breakdown. That's my view. Okay, Claire Bill. Um, Eltersley has a population of 401. Okay. Um, but what I would like to know is, uh, councillors Howell and Wright were contacted. Have they still not replied? No, I've not heard back from them. Unfortunately. Okay. Are we? Are we? Sorry, did you want to speak? Yeah, I, I go along with Claire that I really want to know what we're spending two thousand pounds on, and you know. Five pound a head is quite a lot. My maths or something wrong. Might not be. Okay. Um, over to you two then, I'm afraid, uh, Jay and Vicky, if you could go back to the group uh, quickly for us. Um, when are we going to do it? Did they say when are we going to do it? They haven't given yeah. the date when they're going to do this, have they? Yeah, it'd be nice. nice I didn't see the date. There isn't a date. Don't think there was. Let me have a look. Okay. Could we have, could we have the dates so that we're not going to trip? In actual fact, if the, if the information comes back that satisfies, I mean, uh, you two come back and you could probably go back to your job, I suppose, really. I think it would be the easiest way on this one. Um, we need to know dates. Of, so if, if it's going to be next week, it's pointless <laughs> at that time. So... Um, yeah, dates. What they, what they do? Is it just a street party? How's it going to run? Could we have some comment from um, Mark and Nick? That would be quite handy, councillors, for that that patch. It'd be, it would be nice to have their support. Absolutely, Martin. Uh, yeah, and it's a bit of confusion here because it's described as a project type equipment and capital purchase. And yet they say yeah. below that they're providing a uh, open running a street party. I'm wondering whether actually what they're trying to do is part why it's so large is to try and contribute towards the cost of the um, the uh, equipment. So uh, it might well be that it's acceptable to pay for the equipment. I mean, uh, uh, but it's in, and maybe that's what they should be saying. But we do need this detail. So that's an interesting a bit of confusion here. I think. I suspect, as Bill said earlier, that this is. This is a very small community, very small. 400 people is very small. And from our experience, all of us here, um, any community that has a big project for a play park or anything like that has a very small, dedicated group. Melbourne did one a few years back. It's 6,000 people at that point, 6,500 residents in Melbourne. And there was a committee of 10, and they worked very, very hard. So I was working on the papers of <laughs> the, the numbers. Um, you know, that was probably about two people in Eckersley. So... Um, I'm, I'm pretty supportive, really. I think this is, this is what it was about. It was about people to kind of celebrate the, the lockdown ending and then coming back out. I'm going to go to Bill. Yeah, I, I'm, I support it too. I don't want to give you the wrong impression. I am supportive, but it does seem a lot of money for a, a village with a population of 400. That's all I'm saying. And, you know, I'd like to know what they're going to spend it on. And I, I think we've, others have said that. So, and I wouldn't, and, and we may perhaps take the option that Jay reminded us of earlier and, and offer, actually offer less than they've asked for on this occasion. It's a possibility. We might, but um, perhaps we can leave that with Councillor Williams. I mean, I think if, if, we, if we do the officers first, John, then they come back through you. But I think, generally speaking, we have the concerns that we've raised. Other than that, then it kind of fits the bill. But just yeah, in a bit I'm of just, I just want to ask a question. Is Ettersley one of the parishes that's so small that we can actually, that they can actually apply to the community chest? 
I think it's too big, isn't it? Yeah. Sorry, it's 161. Just goes over. Yeah, 161, okay. so it's, it's over that number. Okay, that's okay. I, mean, I was going to say, say that if they could, perhaps they, if you can say to them, they could apply to us to contribute towards the play equipment. But obviously, if, if they're not, then they can't. Go on, Joe. Um, yeah, just to jump in, I actually know Elphisley and, and the Parish Council quite well there because that's where I run my electrical station every year. Um, and they haven't yet installed the play equipment. They've been fundraising for it for a long time. Part of it is exercise equipment. You know that, you know those sort of uh, exercise, outdoor exercise equipment that you have next to a park so the parents can exercise while the kids play kind of thing. I think they're about 7,000 short, if I remember rightly, in raising the money for their play equipment. My guess is the application has been put in in a rush it would, within the last couple of days before the, the scheme closed. Um, and what I think they wanted from speaking to Roger, the, the parish chair, um, I think they wanted to have some, some money towards the equipment to help fill this deficit so they can actually get the equipment installed and also part of the money to run a, run a kind of party and have the new equipment at, at the forefront of the celebration along with getting people out after COVID. So yeah, I don't think there's enough information being given, and I don't think they've really uh, sold their uh, what they want to do very well. But I do think at, at the heart of their application, it is a it is a good cause and exactly what we were asking for. But I do fully understand we could defer this one and come back to the next grant advisory committee with the further information, or we could find out more information and come back to John and, and then award it if John's happy after the further information has been sought. Claire. Um, yeah, so I, I have a question about this. Um, that is, if they had applied for funding for the play equipment to make up the difference, um, because the play equipment was important for health and well-being, particularly post-COVID, that would have fitted with this grant stream, wouldn't it? But it seems to me they're mixing two things up. Either they want a party to launch the play equipment, or they want the play equipment. Now, you know, both actually would be eligible for this grant stream, but they're running the two together and not giving us enough information. So, you know, let's know what it really is, and then we could probably fund it, or most of it. I think I'm content to say that from what comments have been made here, John, if uh, Jay and Vicky go and do their work and they come back to you, and then you can have the, obviously, the final decision on that one. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. Brilliant, thanks. Okay. Um, next up is Stapleford Parish Council. Their project is the under 12 playground refurbishment and in particular the refurbishment of the baby and young child swings. Um, the playground equipment was originally installed in 2002 and is now a bit out of date with some equipment no longer actually working. Um, obviously the park has been a really important place while it, you know, when it's been able to be open during COVID-19 and it's more important than ever that families and children are encouraged to get out and play. They did some community consultation before the pandemic with regard to the refurbishment of the playground and they found that several families drove out outside of Stapleford to use play equipment out elsewhere because the standard of the play equipment in the park at Stapleford was um, not particularly good. So they are, listen they are listening to refurbish the whole play park. Um, the group is actually only looking for funding from us for the refurbishment of the swings at the playground and the total cost of that is um, nine, just over £1,900. They are only seeking the amount excluding VAT, which is over well, about £1,600. The Jubilee playground is on the recreation ground with public access permitted all day. The village has a primary school and the, vol the, vol the majority of the students live locally. And the recreation also benefit and also benefits Great and Little Shelford who visit 
um, the recreation ground and also there's a football club nearby which use which use the recreation ground so the the playground um, is crucial a crucial local village resource and important that um, it's um, you know in good working order for everybody to use thank you Vicky thank you comments members It's a good. It's a really good application, actually. Detailed and accurate, and um, yeah, I think and they absolutely hit the nail on the head um, when they say that to get parents and children out to have safe equipment after lockdown. Yeah, when the lo when our local playground opened, it was absolutely mobbed. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Very much. Yeah. Um, in that case, I think that's a yes. Um, and you may have noticed that Erin come up and said, uh, whispered in my shell right, uh, under our current rules, uh, COVID safety in, in this building, we have to take a 15 minute break as we leave the chamber and suck in some fresh air. Um, so if you don't mind, I think this is probably an appropriate moment to, to, to suspend for the, for the time being and see you back at just after midday. Is that okay? Three minutes past 12, <laughs> to be precise. <laughs> Thanks.
if you've got anything to eat or coffee and tea, keep it out of sight because we have not had that luxury. And we feel very aggrieved. Yeah, shove it, John. <laughs> Are we all ready to continue? I'll let you know when we're live. Okay. We're live. Okay. So our next one has come from Swadesley Parish Council. And the project is for outside seating and tables on Market Green in Swadesley, along with recycling and waste bins. Market Green in the con conservation area of the village has become an, an extremely popular area for people to meet outdoors, especially of late during the restrictions placed. Um, in the area, there is a small coffee and cake shop for news agents and several routes leading to public rights of way around the village. Um, they want to um, add to their existing benches that they have in the area which will give all residents the opportunity to continue post-COVID to use the outdoor open spaces, have areas to sit and meet outside safely, um, and this will enhance the area. As well as providing the picnic benches, additional litter bins will also be provided by the Parish Council, and these will include bins to collect recyclables such as glass, paper and plastics, as more people are using those areas. There will be a contribution from the Parish Council towards the project and they have contributed an amount of £574.78. Um, the Market Green is also used for various other community events such as festivals, community picnics and events like the annual barrel rolling. Um, this is project will be an ideal way to encourage the community to meet again post COVID lockdowns. Councillor Ellington supports this project, um, as I said before, as do the Parish Council. Um, the total cost of the project is £2,568.16 and they are seeking an amount of £1,993.38. So that's basically the difference in what the Parish Council have contributed. Thank you, Vicky. Thank Hello. you. Supporters, I think it's a good application. Um, I think it's the kind of thing that this uh, stream, this funding stream, is for. Um, and I hope good use will be made of it if we agree it. Um, and I hope that we might have a little label on it and advise our clients. Brilliant. Sue? Yes, um, this is, uh, uh, has become really a very popular area because of the coffee outlet mostly. But the WI meets there at 10 o'clock on a Thursday morning, which is always when I've got another meeting, but never mind. Um, and also, the, there's so many walkers around the village and they have to pass by. We've actually had to um, fence off three car parking spaces so that we can have socially distanced queuing. And as you walk past, you see there's at least 14 people standing in a queue waiting to get their coffee and go drink it on the on the green so it it really has been and it was it is extremely difficult in the seating that's there if you're old and decrepit to get your leg over you know so i i suggested that they should have seats that were more user friendly so i won't vote but yes it, it it's a good thing thank you i mean uh, Aaron, Aaron, unless you are you you're, you're not involved in it, are you? No, I'm not on the parish council. Um, but when when it was suggested that they replace the that they increase the seating area with the same seats that they've got at the moment, it was me that said, "Nah, don't do that. Get some seats that are more comfortable for elderly people." Just ask Aaron just for some clarification. I think you can vote. Thanks, Chair. Uh, my line would be that Councillor Ellington can absolutely vote on this item. Um, she wouldn't be benefiting from this personally. 
Um, and while she may have uh, contributed to an idea for that, has obviously not been involved in the actual forming of that. So uh, absolutely can have a vote. Thank you. There you go then. Right, so I'm, I'm, I've had the uh, affirmation from the back and in front of Ian and Martin. Uh, that's all of us then. That's a, that's a yes from us, thanks. Thank you, thank you. Okay, moving on to Great and Little Chisel Parish Council. Um, it's a bench for the chalk pit. Um, the chalk pit in the village has been a wildlife haven for many years. However, it has become overgrown. So they've already um, done some clearing of the pit uh, with the use of the, the volunteers in the village. One is a, who is a conservationist and they've um, replanted lots of saplings in the area. Now they would like to install some seating to allow people to visit and reflect on one of the most peaceful sites within the village. Um, they describe the, the area as a special place in a special village with, and it's an attraction for all. They are looking for funding to purchase one bench. Um, they have said in the application that they want to provide seating, so I, I assume, although it's not made clear that they want to purchase more than one bench, but they're actually only seeking funding for us for one of the benches and they've applied for £850. Thank you, Becky. Comments? Colleagues? Kind of does what it says on the tin, I think. Martin? Yep. Yep. That's a, that's a yes, thank you. Lovely. Thank you. Okay. Um, so moving on to Friends of Histon and Impington Community. Um, otherwise known as Hi Friends. It's a registered charity based in Hitting and Hitting Impington. Uh, started on the 1st of January 2020 following the merger of two long standing village charities. Um, the project is um, that Hi Friends have been working with another charity called Postability. Um, they've been working with them prior to the pandemic and they had organised um, specialist exercise classes for groups at Hitting and in Impington in the recreation ground pavilion. pavilion. The group now wish to restart their classes um, post COVID, and they also want to add a, a, a dedicated class for those living with long term COVID. And these classes will be available to anyone within the district, not just those who reside in Histon and Impington. Um, the group will have a capacity of 10, and if there's greater demand, they can set up additional classes, but at, to, to start with, they're looking at just having um, a, a class for 10. Um, each session would last 75 minutes, um, it'll include time for exercises and also for social interaction. Um, at present, the group envisages the activity being available for an initial six month period. However, they will review that after six months to see if there's you know, any, any take up longer term but their funding they're seeking is for the initial start up for the for the six months. High friends will also make their community minibus available with a volunteer driver to help transport those who would like to attend who otherwise don't have their own transport. Um, the project will cost in total um, £1,794. High friends themselves are contributing £394 towards the project and are seeking a, a grant of £1,400 to cover the remainder. Councillor ha Hayling supports the, the project um, and states that High Friends are very well known to them and provides a, a, an excellent service and benefit to the community. Um, fully supports the grant and application, their foresight and vision in adapting the postability support specifically for long term COVID sufferers um, is something that um, has really been supported. So that's my friends. Thank you, Vicky. Um, Martin, as a local member, I'd just I'd ask you a question before you even speak. It says here there's the posability, is that the, the exercise class? Is that, are, you, are you a member of the posability class? No, I probably ought to be. <laughs> but I would support the application. 
Thank you. And I'm assuming you, you said earlier that Councillor Hunt had also indicated to you that he did. That was the other, that was the other application. I'll beg your pardon. Mm -hmm. Colleagues, any other comments? No. Yes. That's a, that's a yes from us, Vicky. Lovely, thank you. Okay, moving on to the parochial church council of All Saints Church, Cottenham. Um, you may recall these from a couple of um, committees ago. They applied through the normal community chest scheme and were awarded a thousand pounds towards the same project. The church bill, the, this project also falls within the COVID recovery guidelines and are therefore applying again. Um, their project is to um, install the uh, projector and screen within their, their church building. Um, and they, they state that as the COVID restrictions end, the church expects to welcome the opportunity for, to bring people together in the largest indoor space in the village with the best acoustics. They've received let several letters of support from community groups that will use it, um, from Philip Saunders, a local lecturer, and also musician Helen Med Medlock. Um, the church is working to make their building accessible and user-friendly, and this new facility will contribute to that. Um, for example, their annual summer holiday club has been on occasion held in All Saints Church. Um, that brings together some 50, 150 primary school children and many young leaders who develop their skills over the year. Um, every year, much of the equipment they use during the school holiday club has to be borrowed or hired, but now they'll have those facilities in place for everyone to use them while they're there. Um, they have sought additional funding from the All Churches Trust, Stenedge Community Association, the John Fitzwilliam Charity, and the also the Community Chest Grant, uh, which was awarded back in March. And they're still fundraising and, and having other grants ongoing. And they've applied for the full grant of £2,000. Colleagues? Hang on, Martin. Martin, Claire first. Um, yeah, so it's it's very, very similar to the application that we've had before, isn't it? I mean, really yeah. very similar indeed. And um, I've got two questions. One, does this really fall within the scope of this grant stream? And the second is, how are they going to make up um, the difference. Um, I mean, they said they're going to make up any other remaining by other grant applications and fundraising activities. I think like a lot of groups have seen it's been really difficult to fundraise over the last year. Um, so obviously they're experienced difficulty raising funds via that method. But they've just stated that they have other grant applications, although not not stipulated from where. Um, Jane, do you think it falls into the? I was only going to raise the issue of the fact they've already had a community chess grant, and this is making a second bite of the cherry, and is that acceptable? Mm. Yeah, one of one of the things was was that we were stipulated that you the same group could come back for the community chess for up to a thousand. COVID up to, so that would be fine. There would, there would be no restrictions on that. It's just as Claire says whether or not it actually qualifies under the, the conditions and one of the applicable. Right, so, so. I'm not sure whether it does qualify under the conditions of the post-COVID. Um, and I am a little concerned about coming back for a second bite at the cherry, as it were. Um, And when do they think they're going to find the other, I've got to work it out, about 4,000 they'll be short. Because it could be that 
this won't happen for another 12 months if, if they haven't got a fairly sure um, access to another 4,000 to, to make up the lot difference, if I've got my maths right. Bill? Yeah, Chair, they, they, they seem to be a long way short right now, don't they, um, of the target? So it could, as Councillor Rankin says, it could be quite a while before this is uh, taken in school with. I'm slightly more... I'm slightly more nervous of this one for that reason. And I don't know whether or not they can come back another time um, when they're closer to their target. I don't, I don't know. Having given them already, already, South Campus has already given them a thousand. So, yeah, I'm, I'm slightly more nervous for this one. I think just to be clear, and Jay will, he's got his hand up, so I think he's probably going to say the same thing. But Jay, just correct me if I'm wrong, and that is that any group, could make an application to the community test as long as they, they qualified and the COVID, but I don't remember it being for the same the same job, so to speak, or the same thing. It was you could make a separate one here, but there was no restrictions on what you you could access both. Is that correct? Yeah, the application is fine um, on the basis of the 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 rules we put in place, which weren't very very strict really down to today really and what members felt should be granted and shouldn't be granted it does offer the facility to be equipped to allow the public to again meet um, and do you know the same it's the same kind of mental health getting together again as a lot of the other grants we've, we've looked at so yeah we did say that they could uh, that, that you know groups could come and have one bite each cherry as, as Councillor Hales puts it so there isn't anything uh, wrong with the application in regard to it qualifying or not to be eligible. Um, it's just whether you feel that this is, uh, um, it is basically a decision down to committee today on whether they feel that the thousand pounds was sufficient or whether they'd like to fund the project further. Um, but it's the same application pretty much as the last time. It's the same project, it's the same projector, and it's the same benefits for the community as they ascertained the first time round. Thanks. Thank you, Jay. John, over to you. Well, Jay's absolutely right. I mean, they've, they've got every right to apply again. Um, and I have to say, I'm minded to agree to this. Um, bear in mind that, you know, yes, they're still short, but we won't give them the money until they've got all the money and they go ahead with the project. So we're not going to be giving them money and then it fall through. Um, they'll get the money when... Um, we pledged them the money, but we don't actually give them the money until they've done it. So I'm happy with that, and it, and it does meet the criteria we set, and good on them for coming back and trying for more money. Um, the project um, meets, you know, the criteria. So I say I'm I'm minded to go ahead with this one. That's a, that's a happy move. And I'm, I'm just on that note, I think if you put your hand down, please, John. Uh, I might get Melbourne Community Hub to come back for a bigger camera then. <laughs> All right. Thank, thanks. I was just joking, John. Okay, thanks. Um, oh dear, turn myself off. Vicky, that's a yes. Thank you. And uh, moving on. Thank you. Okay, moving on to Fen Ditton Primary School, PTFA. Their project is a nature trail project, helping Fenditton to thrive outside. Um, the lockdown effect, uh, excuse me, the lockdown, the effects of COVID-19 has massively impacted the, the mental health of pupils in, in their school. Um, this year has been frequent challenges for the pupils of the school and lockdown has changed virtually every aspect of the children's lives, their home, um, school, school life, their ability to socialise with family and friends. Um, the group expects many of the children to have difficulties over the next few months, following their return to school, including dealing with fear and anxiety, challenging situations at home, uncertainty in re-establishing friendships and routines, etc. 
The group is striving to provide mental health support for children and staff of the school with an emphasis on mindfulness and well-being and have set aside an area for a new nature trail which will function as a, a, a space for the whole community to use when lockdown restrictions allow. The project has already started with support from Tarmac who install the path and Groundwork East who have worked with staff and pupils to wild the edges of the path and add features to support nature. Part of the part of the project the group are seeing funding for is the development of the independent wellbeing trail, an exciting and innovative outdoor learning and a community space that encourages individual or group exploration and discovery, as well as enabling it to, to use it to support individual or whole class wellbeing and teaching. They have described exactly what they're going to be doing on the trail, and that is detailed in the, in the report. Um, the funding will enable the group to grow their trail with planting and points of interest such as fact boards, bug hotels and outdoor seating to engage all users of the space and bring nature to the area. The nature trail will benefit the whole community when restrictions lift, a place for social gatherings and for families to enjoy. The group have strong relationships with community groups who could also use the space for events and activities and this will help pupils and parents feel part of the wider community so they may be encouraged to take a more active role there too. They, the, the total cost of the project is £6,133 and they're seeking funding of the full grant of £2,000. Thank you Vicky. Uh, Claire? Yes, I'd like to speak in support of this. And in fact, actually, I was in contact with someone called George Sherwin, who I presume okay. is a new officer, um, yeah. twice uh, during the time that this was going through. Um, and um, I was also asked um, in advance of its being put in by a member of the uh, PTFA um, for, for some advice. Um, so I, I think it's a good project, and um, they've gone to quite a lot of... Um, effort to put in a good application. Um, and just a couple of uh, points of information. Uh, the, I do know that members of the parish council have supported the school throughout COVID in different ways, not necessarily focused on this. Um, so there is, uh, there's been long-term support for, for the school in different ways. Um, and I think that they make a good case for opening it up to the community. And that was one of the things that I uh, was originally concerned about when I got in touch with George Sherwin um, and I think they um, really made that clear in the application. So I'd like to support this. Thank you, Claire. I say yes from Bill Martin. Um, uh, I mean, in, in principle, fine. Uh, I'm a little bit concerned about having a low post and rope fence that's going into an area which is near where young kids are going to be running because kids running to running here, there, and everywhere, and I suspect there's something which they might be tend to fall over rather than. Um, but if they think they can do it uh, safely, um, fine. Bill, Bill Tappy, Mr. Doki, um, oh, I keep switching myself off. Um, on the agenda, it says that John was going to speak after we, I assume, made our recommendation. So I'm looking around here. John, that we're uh, we're in favour of recommendations. So over to you. Okay, that's uh, that's good. I, I, I agree with that. I just wanted to point out. I used to be a governor at this school. Um, I was in charge of their finances, and uh, the school has a very good reputation as a forest school. Um, so this this fits nicely in with that. And um, yeah, I, I thank you very much. I think um, that this is a, a worthwhile project. Thank you. That's a yes from us then, Vicky. Lovely, thank you. Um, so next up is the Women of Orwell, who are a community group, um, organises monthly meetings for all women, all women in Orwell. The group promote and support local projects and initiatives. And during uh, the, the pandemic, they have been supporting the parish council uh, with supporting residents they are looking to hold 
a bird of prey show on the 4th of July 2021, which will be open to the whole village. They had a similar one back in 2018 and it was in, enjoyed and attended by the majority of the village. They're hoping that this event will cheer people up after the awful year and get people back out in the village attending local events. The event will be held outside in a large grassy area in a crunch pit, uh, which is easy to make COVID safe. The group are intending to use the grant to cover the cost of the birds of prey um, and their handlers to be in attendance. Um, a grant award of £500 would lend, allow the children to attend for free. Um, they provided a quote for the cost of the birds of prey and it actually totaled £462.50. Uh, I think they've just kind of rounded up to 500 um, but they, they're just looking for a grant to cover the cost of that and, and they're intending to um, fund fund the rest. Thank you Vicky. Um, any comments from members? You're okay with it? It's a yes from us then, thank you. Yes. Okay. Um, Cambridge Past, Present and Future Pathways to Recovery is the project name. Um, Cambridge PPF has been established uh, since 1927 um, with the aim to inspire all people of all ages to get out outdoors, help them to enjoy and learn about and get involved within their local environment and culture. The group provides eight miles of footpaths and many of these footpaths have become damaged due, due to significant increase in footfall during the winter months caused by more people exercising during the pandemic. Many of the paths have become unusable or unsafe for people who are less mobile. Now they want to use the grant funding to repair the paths so they are usable for next winter by people who are less mobile. Funds will pay for the cost of equipment, materials and staff time volunteers will also be involved to help repair the paths. Um, the total cost of the project is just over £5,000 and they've not um, stipulated how they will meet the additional cost but um, from looking at their accounts it shows they do have significant reserves so I can only assume that they'll be topping up um, the shortfall and they're looking for £2,000 from the Covid fund support the maintenance of these pathways. Thank you, Vicky. Um, comments from colleagues? Um, yes, I was just a bit concerned that the wood chipper is uh, going to cost £684 to train people to use it. Well, I would suggest that they just have one person who knows how to use it and I don't suggest that £684 is necessary, but the, in principle, I think the whole project is a good one. Thank you. Any votes? I, I support this. It's, it's been very, very, very heavily used during lockdown. Um, so I think the work is really necessary. It, 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 very, it really fits within the scope of this grant, I think. Thank you. Sue, are you, you supportive just with the comment there? I see yes from us to be the comment. Lovely, thank you. Okay, moving on. Can I, to... can I just come sorry, in? Sorry, I had my hand up. Sorry, Joe. You may have not notice. Um, sorry, Joe. I use Wandlebury very often, actually, at least once or twice a week. And, um, and there are some parts of it that they have now have to rope off because the footpaths have got so so worn so you know i certainly you know support what they say that uh, they do need to uh, be doing some maintenance on on a lot of the footpaths because of the volume of people that have been using using it to exercise so this is very worthwhile thank you john thanks vicky thank you um so moving on to telugu association cambridge cricket club um, 
The group described themselves as a friendly, non-profitable cricket club. Cricket club. Ninety um, percent of their members live and work in the South Cambridgeshire area. Established in 2017, starting with one team um, consisting of 11 players, but now they currently have more than 50 members representing people from various backgrounds. Uh, they have two teams and uh, they play in the Cambridgeshire and Huntingdonshire Premier League and a, a development team which plays 26 years on a Sunday. Um, they're a bit of a nomadic club. They don't have a permanent ground, um, so they are hiring. They've been hiring um, grounds to play on on a year by year basis. Um, they're looking for, to use grant funding to purchase a lease for a ground, which they hope to be in the South Cambridgeshire area. However, it's not. Um, that's not been confirmed as yet. I, I had a look at their club website and it shows they're currently using a ground in Reach, which falls under East Cams. So I did ask them for more information if, if this was the ground they intended to lease or if it was another one, um, you know, specifically within South Cams. But the reply was it will be in between Cambridge and Camborne or it might be the one in Reach. Um, so th they're looking for support to help them establish ideally to help them establish the ground within South Cams, but obviously that depends on ground availability. Um, Council of Goss and Council of Wilson did get back to me, but they saw the link with Cottenham and Rampton as, as quite tenuous. Um, it, it kind of fell under Cottenham and Rampton because the applicant um, actually resides in Cottenham. Um, so that was why it, it fell under the, their jurisdiction. Um, they're looking for an amount of a thousand pounds. They've detailed their cost would be two thousand pounds for a lease and a thousand pounds towards equipment. However, they haven't provided me with any quote, quotes despite my requests to do so. Thank you, Vicky. I mean, when it says costings at the bottom, there's two thousand for a lease and a thousand for equipment. So their project cost is three thousand. Yeah, well, I blame the admin team on that one. Well, no, it's not. No, I mean, it wasn't <laughs> for that. It was just, you know, and, and they yeah. haven't said where they're. That wasn't a criticism, Vicky. It, 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 was, it was just they haven't said where they're going to get the other two thousand pounds from, or and what no. have you. They haven't asked for PC to support, and there's no financial support there at this time. That would be because it would be very, very difficult. It, it, uh, they seem to be not certain where they're going to mm. stick their roots. Um, I'm not overly confident on this one. Members? Claire? Um, I don't see how it fits our criteria, actually. They haven't made a case for its fitting our criteria, I don't think. Anyway, unless I'm missing something in the, in the short amount of information here. Um, uh, you know, have they said how it fits with the post-COVID recovery? Um, and also, they've not pres provided enough information, enough financial information. Concerns? Well, my concern is that if they don't know what ground they're going to hire, they don't actually know how much it's going to cost them to hire it. Um, and I, I agree with you that it's not... They do say in the blurb at the top that it's startup costs, but actually uh, nowhere does it say it's post-COVID or anything like that, and, and so I'm feeling a bit like you. It could easily go in the community grants area uh, at a later date. Bill? I've some sympathy with them because presumably they've, they've got members dotted around various villages in South Cams. Um, Telugu is a you know, they're, they're Indian, it's an Indian um, club. Um, so they're going to have some difficulty, aren't they, finding a sort of place to base themselves, but they've clearly got a need. So I do have some sympathy with, with, with them, but uh, I also agree that, you know, it's probably not a post-COVID thing. Um, could they, would it be better if they were to apply for a main community grant, community chess grant, perhaps that encouraged to do that? I've got um, you, 
doubts about that. Um, right, now I've got two hands up uh, out of the chamber, Jay and John. I don't know which one of you was first. Shall I go to uh, Jay first, John? Over to you, Jay. Thanks, Jay. Um, I was just going to say, yeah, the only issue I see with this application is that, you know, what happened, you know, that it's a difficult one because their final destination might end up out of outside of South Cambridge. So, yes, it is benefiting some South Cambridge residents, but yeah, I, I, I would feel more comfortable if they were to come back to the standard community chest once they had a ground, um, personally. Um, but yeah, back down to you guys, really. That's just my gut instinct is that I'd feel better about um, this if they had a final. Uh, ground basically and they had some more you, you know it's all very chicken and egg isn't it they want to get the money to then get the ground so you know I do understand that point of view as well and it does benefit South Cambridge residents so it's a difficult one. Thank you Jay. We got John first of all sorry. Yeah I'm, I'm I have a problem with this I mean first of all they haven't supplied us with any accounts so I, I, I think we would want to see their accounts and secondly, um, I'm unhappy about this equipment. They haven't actually itemised what equipment they need. Um, and it is tenuous with COVID, although I can see that, um, you know, cricket is exercise and, um, and yes, you know, it could be encouraging more people to play cricket. But it's all just so vague. Mm -hmm. And... I think what we need to put, what they need to do is to find themselves a ground and then come to us, you know, with, with support. Um, and also, I'm not sure whether we give money for lease, leases. I don't, I can't, I can't see how, yeah. I, I, I you know, if they came to us for uh, wanting to uh, fund equipment, that's fine. But a lease, I'm not absolutely comfortable with that. And I certainly want to see their accounts anyway before we do anything. So um, perhaps, yeah, perhaps we ought to go back to them and say, you know, this doesn't really fit COVID. Come and apply to the community chest um, and, and see. But I, I would be, I don't know, Jay, if it, um, if it does meet our criteria of paying for a lease, I'm not absolutely. I don't it, would, sure it, it would. It wouldn't generally, but I think they were putting the case forward that this was for startup costs to get the group settled, basically. So you could argue either way, to be honest. But I okay. do. But I think well, I think we need them to. We need some more information. I don't think I can make a decision on this. Sure. I think looking at the faces in here, John, that has got a different opinion. No, actually, they, John and Jay, have really articulated what I was trying was getting at a bit myself and that I think they, they should come back to us. But I do think we should try to go back to them and, and say that we would like you know we'd like to help them um, with the right kind of application in the right at the right time. You know well I think that bearing in mind what we all said here John and what you've just said I think this is back over to Jay to make that clear. And uh, when they've planted their roots and they have roots come back. Thanks. Excuse me. Okay. Um, Land Beach Parish Council um, are intended to use a section of the recreation ground to create a wide flower meadow in order to make it a more peaceful area for the community and a better habitat for wildlife. Many people have turned to the to nature for the, during the pandemic to find to find a calm area, and they hope that this area within the community will continue to do that. Um, as well as the, the purchase of the wildflowers in the meadow, they want to purchase 12 bird boxes and three bat boxes, all of which are sustainably made with recycled plastic, um, and volunteers will place those around the area. Benches will also be installed so people can sit and join their surroundings. Uh, a lot of people visit the recreation ground, so by creating a more peaceful space, hopefully the community will spend more time there and make use of the physical amenities 
the physical and mental benefits of being in nature. The parish councils have supported the project and they are they've also supported it financially they'll be contributing 500 pounds and the total cost of the project is 1160 so they're seeking 660 pounds from the grant funding to cover the remaining costs councillor Griffith has emailed a, a letter of support um, and that's detailed at the bottom there of the support residents health and well-being and the connection to nature as we come out of lockdown thank you vicky claire um yep i i i think this is a good project and it's really nice to see that the parish council has put in 500 pounds lamb beach is a small community um and i think what they're doing is is good and interesting um that the bird box is in the bat boxes um just a point of information uh, a slight correction um, the district councillor support, um, Councillor Hazel Smith has retired um, and the new councillor is Councillor Paul Fairpark. So maybe just a note for that in future. Yeah, that's probably why Councillor Hazel Smith didn't reply. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would be why. Thank you. I'd just like to ask a question if I may. Um, I think the 7th of June is an excellent day, <laughs> mainly because it's my birthday. But, and cards and presents can be sent in the post, um, but it, they've said they've done it this year. And as I recollect, I am not 61 as yet. So this is a, a, pre, a, pre, a preemptive strike for 500 pounds in, yeah? Yes. Yes, I need to check that. It may be that, that that's when they're gonna give it to them. Martin. And these are genuine bats. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but we can pry it. Thank you. Uh, Sue, Sue, do you want to say anything? Oh, I think it's a good scheme. Um, and I'm not, I'm not absolutely sure that sustainable bird boxes and sustainable bat boxes are any different from bird, bird, <laughs> bird boxes and bat boxes, but don't let that worry me. Bill? Even with the dodgy bats, yeah, okay. Even with dodgy bats, possibly. Right, okay. Thank you, that's it then, thanks. Okay, so just ring the mic. Thank you. Okay, uh, moving on to Little Wilbraham and Six Marlbottom Parish Council. Um, the application is for funds directly aimed at enhancing a post-COVID community event designed to tie in the past to the future and bring residents of the parish together. Um, they held the village feast in 2019 for the first time in 115 years. Um, this was, uh, it was previously an annual event in the village, traditionally held on or close to midsummer. The, the last village feast prior to 2019 was held in 1915, and they assume it was discontinued after, as it, after the, then, because there's no records indicating it revived after 1918. So quite um, a, a historic event. Um, so they held the village feast in 2019, which was a huge success. Residents brought their own picnic and a cake to share with generous donations from residents and drinks were provided at no cost. Um, they were due to hold the feast again in 2020, but this was abandoned. Um, however, they're looking to rehost the event this year in compliance with government and coded COVID directives. The actual project is called Shelter Together. Um, they want to provide two shelters um, to use at the village event. And the cost of the two shelters is um, £664.32, pence, which is two uh, like pop-up gazebos with two sides. The parish council will support the project um, and are also contributing £330 towards the cost. Um, councillors Cone and Dalton have also provided an email in support of the project and they're detailed on the report. Um, so they're seeking funding for um, 
50% of the cost. They said they've requested £330, however, the remaining required is based on the quotes provided at £314.32 per penny. Thank you, Vicky. Just to you note, know, you said that uh, Graham and they were both supported this. Yes. And the emails, but I don't see one from Graham. So if you, if, if you have got that there, would you, when you redo it, would you better okay. just pop that in? I think it's only, only right and proper. Uh, yeah. Claire, do you want to speak on this one? Only to say that um, I, I, I think it's a good application. Um, it's got all the information and um, it's good to see that the Parish Council is supporting it both um, in person and with money. I think that that's always um, that's always good to see. Um, and I think that the, the place where this event will take, the site where this event will take place is very open. Um, and to have these, uh, and I remember the first feast or, or the first feast after 1915, which was held in um, 2018, um, it was a good day, but if the day it had been rain, it would have really made a difference. So having these shelters will mean that it's possible, even if the weather isn't good. And I think they'll be really important in the future for making better use of this space, because it is very open. Anybody, any other comments? I feel that's a yes from you. Um, just the, uh, the, the uh, remaining required is 314 and there are 330. Um, I presume we only pay on receipts, so if the cost, I mean, it may include costs for transport and what have you, but uh, I just, um, we don't normally supply, do we, unless there is a receipt? Yeah, they provided um, quotes for, oh. for this project, and that did total slightly less than, than what they were asking for, but quite often you find people will round things up mm. when they say, you know, it costs Three hundred and twenty-eight pounds sixty, and they'll raise it to three hundred and thirty or whatever. So I think that's what's happened this in, in this instance. But um, yeah, based on what the, the parish council contributed and the actual quotes of the purchase of the equipment, um, the remaining is three hundred and fourteen and a few pence at this stage. Is in principle happy to support. Thank you very much. That's a, a yes from us then. Fabulous. You'll be pleased to know this is the last one. It's not that we're pleased, it's just that we're, we're, we're enthralled with the sound of your voice for the last... I'm sure my dog keeps saying... Yes. Nearly three hours, Vicky, that's all it is. <laughs> I haven't spoken for so long. Okay, so the last one has come from a group called um, Disability Cambridgeshire. Um, we use a lead organisation, first established in 92 and currently has 216 members. They are based in Cambridge City, however, it offers services to all residents across South Cams. Their advice and information service will be accessed by all clients via email, uh, the website, social media, telephone, home visits and Zoom calls. Um, the project is called the Post-Covid Volunteer Project. Um, Disability Cambridgeshire works to help disabled, disabled people access benefits, improve mental health, reduce so and reduce socialisation. Socialisation, excuse me. Um, DC needs a new advice line and admin volunteers to replace the volunteers lost as a result of their office being closed since March 2020 due to COVID. And since that time, they've only been able to provide a voicemail and email service to clients. Uh, when their office reopens after restrictions are lifted, new volunteers will be necessary to help answer inquiries via the phone and provide administration support to the team. They've already identified two possible volunteers, however, they will require an induction and a training programme in order to meet the accreditation requirements and, able, and to enable them to support the work they do. The charity has no resources to meet the cost of this. Grant funding is being sought to support this and would help Disability Cambridgeshire to return to providing a more normal service to clients. The aim of the project was the aim of the project is to recruit and induct and train four new volunteers. Therefore, this funding will pay for a current 
part-time member of staff to increase their contract by three hours per week. This will then allow them to run a 12-week induction and training programme for two new volunteers twice. Um, at the end of this six-month project, they will have four fully trained and effective volunteers. Um, seeking funding to cover an increase in salary co costs of the existing member of staff to train the new volunteers to run the programme, and that cost would be £1,195.65. And that's what they're seeking funding for. Thank you, Vicky. I mean, I think this one falls squarely into the mental health, doesn't it? Um, uh, I mean, obviously, with the disability as well, and it's been widely reported that people with disabilities have been majorly affected by COVID over the last 18 months. So I did that we didn't sort of fall out from it. Um, do we have anyone speaking for them? So, um, yes, just to say that it's not only those who have got the disability, it's their carers who desperately need support and help. Um, my only question was, how difficult is it for them to recruit volunteers, given the current situation? People are always reluctant to offer them themselves as helpers, uh, and it, it may be quite difficult for them to recruit. I wish them well, but that's it. I have to say, we've been quite fortunate, actually, because Melbourne has sort of been a plethora of people itching to do something. So that, that could be this. It might tip, it might drop off. Who knows? Uh, are we all content, everybody? Uh, okay, that's a, a yes from us, uh, please, Vicky. Lovely, thank you. And, and does that conclude your uh, your offering for today, then? I think, it, I think it does. Thank you so, for listening. Thank you, Vicky, and thank you, Jay, for your input there. Jay, you want to speak? Sorry. Yeah, just, just to say thanks to all the members for that marathon session. We knew it was coming, but really good to get through it. And today we've awarded around about £37,000 to some really good causes in our district. So thanks, everyone. Yeah, thank you. Well, I was just going to say to Vicky, go and have a lie down. She hasn't stopped talking for the last yeah. three hours. I'll tell you what, I'm going to have a week off as well. I was going to say, have a lemsip as well. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to say as well, it's good that it's been a whole range of things. And, and also it's good that it's been a spread across the district. It would be good to look at, you know, how wide the spread is. But my impression as we've been going through it is that um, it has been a good geographical spread, which I think is important as well. Okay. Thank you. Martin. I'm going to have to go now. I'm sorry, I said to Robert I'd to stay till 12.30. Okay. No, that's, that's really kind of you for, uh, for uh, this afternoon. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Just change my thing. Okay, in that case then, it's, uh, I'll say thank you to Jay and Vicky, who are probably going to be part of this day's figure now. Um, we're now going to go back to our agenda, given where we swapped it all around. So we're now going to do agenda item number five and welcome Catherine Hawkes. Uh, Catherine, hope you're well. Uh, over to you. Can't hear you, mate. Can you hear me? You may have to hold the mic up to your mouth, I think, and your earpiece. Is that better? Yeah. Yep, yeah, spot on. Okay. Um, so yes, this relates to £50,000 worth of um, government funding that has been ring-fenced for health and well-being um, relating to COVID and post-COVID recovery. Um, we are bringing to you today a recommendation um, of the criteria for a scheme that we feel would fit this funding really quite well, um, whereby the, the, the applicants would be the dual use facilities that we have agreements with um, across the district already that support the Active and Healthy for Life programme, otherwise known as the GP referral scheme um, or the Exercise on Referral Scheme um, that provide um, a centre for people who might not be able to afford or feel inclined to travel further for their exercise. Um, uh, these schemes um, provide a vital um, resource for those people. 
um, and we are providing, um, we're hoping to provide them with this, this money as a, as a grant scheme that only they can apply into. Um, so there are 11 dual use centres that would be eligible, um, or rather actually, I need to make a correction to the list. You've got a list there of, of um, dual use agreements uh, on Appendix A, I believe it is. Um, North Stowe, there is also a, a dual use agreement that's only been agreed in the last few weeks. And given the criteria here, we don't think they would be eligible anyway. Um, and also in terms of Camborne, it's actually the sports centre that runs the um, referral scheme. So um, rather than the village college. So there's an amendment there on both on both counts to that list. Um, but aside from that, it would be um, 11 schemes that could apply into this um, this scheme if if it's approved as we've proposed. Um, the other part of the proposal here is that um, because of the technicalities around the dual use agreements and because of the time frame, we'd like to get this launched and out so that schools can start their um, the, the facilities can start their work in September. We'd like to be able to do this with officers making a recommendation to the lead member for finance as opposed to coming back to the grants advisory committee just because of the timing and to try and get the decisions made before the end of term so they can do something with it over the summer holidays if if they choose to um so yes um you can see the options there um any questions thank you catherine colleagues uh, claire um I just want to be sure, uh, just a question to Catherine. Um, so the support would not be age related, the support would be across the community. Yeah, and anyone across the community can access those, those centres. The, um, the exercise and referral scheme is for a particular cohort within a community, obviously, that they, they would need to be referred through um, from their GP, that's how that scheme works, but actually anybody can access those dual use centres. Okay, good. Yeah, I'm happy about that. Bill or Sue? These centres are really well used on the whole, and I, um, in the past I have been around several of them and found a number of people who would not have really got off their backsides at all and, and helped themselves um, and I would very much support this. Thank you Sue. Bill? Uh, yes I very much support this. We've, we've had, I've had some discussions with Catherine and colleagues about this. Um, uh, I, I think this is a good use of this money, a very good use of this money. Can you just ask Catherine one question? Um, number two, Bottisham uh, don't off, offer exercise and referral scheme is that significant or not um no we've got a dual use agreement with them although they're outside of the district boundary because they 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 have children from the local village local villages that are within south cambridgeshire going to that school um they we so they would be eligible to apply because they have a dual use agreement but i don't believe they have the exercise on referral scheme at the moment so i think they would probably score down given the scoring criteria we've allocated for this that said we might use this as an opportunity to prompt them to start that scheme so um yeah there should be something positive coming out of it thank you catherine so okay then colleagues um paragraph 18 page six options grants to committee uh, advisory committee to recommend lead member for finance to do we have a choice or we do yep so you've got the the options that we've presented presented are to agree the criteria that we've presented and our evaluation methodology for applications which you'll be familiar with because we're going to try and follow the zero carbon communities grants um evaluation method there um we would offer as officers make recommendations only not decisions but rec make recommendations to the lead members so to john williams and he would make the decisions of the final decisions on the grants to be awarded. Um, that's option A. You could um, make amendments to that. If you want to specify any amendments to that, then that's option B. If you need further information, then op option C is there. Um, however, we are being told by finance that it would be quite um, good to get this money spent 
sooner rather than later. So. Thanks, Catherine. I mean, really, I think really option A is the, the route to go, frankly. You've done all the work anyway, so this is a case of uh, a recommendation to Councillor Gilliam for his findings. Okay, are we agreed with option A? Yeah. That's agreed then. So that, that's uh, unanimous there. Go to the next agenda, which is the auction five uh, agenda item five, Gambler Day Guardians. Is that you again, Catherine? Yes, that's me again. I'm afraid. Sorry. Um, this this is um, you remember that the council allocated full funding to increase the um, the coverage across the district of what are mostly known as mobile warden schemes um, and Gambling Gay uh, Community Warden Scheme. Gambling Gay Guardians Community Warden Scheme was successful in their application. Um, that all was pre-COVID and they have struggled to attract members to their key paying scheme, um, largely because actually there was a really positive response from volunteers across the village who have been able to support older vulnerable people free of charge. Um, that said, there is a desire to move those people across to the gambling gay scheme eventually um, because we know that with a formalized scheme comes some uh, safeguarding uh, health and safety and other other policies and procedures that are followed so we would like to see them move across this proposal um, comes following a request from the scheme to amend their delivery model slightly so that they can reduce their fees to clients in the hope that it will make their scheme more attractive um, uh, amongst a few other changes they'd like to make. Um, and the other upside of this, I think, would be that they won't, they wouldn't then need the additional funding that we were going to ask them to apply for in uh, October 22. As you'll remember, the full, it's quite complicated, but the full funding that they have had for two years will come to an end at that point, which is in the middle of a three year scheme that's already been decided and runs to the end of 24. So for 18 months, in theory, they wouldn't have had a scheme from South Camps to apply to in the way that all the other established schemes would have had. So we agreed at the last meeting of this committee on the 30th of April to ring fence some of that unspent funding uh, for that purpose so that Gambling Gay could apply if they needed to. That won't now be necessary because having um, changed their model, they're happy to try to make the funding they've been allocated already go right the way through to the end of that, that three-year scheme. And they won't need any more funding, assuming the scheme gets up and running and is successful until after that point and when there is a new scheme that they can apply to anyway. I hope that makes sense. Um, but so that that's that's why there's a two-part decision here really and, and recommendations on both counts. Um, one is that they should be allowed to leave their uh, to amend their their scheme criteria, um, and the other is that we reassign that funding that we had set aside and put it into the pot with the other funding that was allocated and reassigned to the service support grants for 22 to 25. Again, you probably remember that decision from last from last time. Thank you, Catherine. John, uh, do you want to say anything, John? So it looked like you were. Yeah, yes. Uh, thank you, thank you, Catherine. Yeah, my, my only um, concern with this is that I don't want to see um, a, a lower set of standards applied. But I think Catherine's reassured us that that's not the case. So I think on that basis, um, you know, I think we need to give them the opportunity to 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 try and make it work. Um, yeah. I think this is a problem actually with we've been facing right across the district that clearly last year when we set up the support um, to local communities to enable them to go and help those in need, um, it did clearly affect the uh, mobile warden scheme um, because why would you pay for something uh, that you would get free, you know, free um, 
but I think we're starting to see the scheme starting to wind down now. And I think the important thing about this is reason why we want to run this scheme is to give it continuity, assurance and all the benefits of being part of a scheme that's overseen by the council as well as part funded by the council. And I think hopefully people will recognise the importance of that going forward. But yeah, I'm, I'm you know, I, I'm fully agreed with the recommendation here. Um, I think gambling gay, you know, should be treated as special case at the moment. And I wish them well, and I hope that they can get the um, get the support and the number of clients they need to make it a success. Thank you, John. Catherine. The other thing I would say, of course, is that actually with the other post-COVID work that we're doing as a council, we should we should be able to put some development, community development type time into supporting schemes that or people who've been supported by COVID volunteers, moving them across to more formalised schemes mm. so that they've got that support and then we we are reassured that there are the safeguarding policies in place that need to be. Of course, during the COVID pandemic, some things, some things were relaxed and volunteers were able to go and support vulnerable people in the community. And what we want to do is sort of tidy that up a bit as not that not the volunteers haven't done a fantastic job, but some of them are falling away. They are going back to work. They are um, fatigued because they've been doing it for so long. Um, and in other in other ways, there might just be a risk either to the volunteer or to the, the vulnerable person themselves that um, something could go wrong. So we'd like to move them across um, gradually to, to to more formal schemes anyway. And, and in Gambling Gay's case, I think they've decided that if they were to amend their delivery model, allow people to have um, phone calls instead of visits, pay less, and so on and so forth, it will help attract people across from that scheme. So Leslie will also be doing some work in Gambling Gay to, to sort of try and smooth that process as well. Thank you, Catherine. I think we're um, obviously, oh, sorry, Claire. Um, yes, I just want to check um, that this service is open again to different to people of different ages and um, point 14 under the details paragraph um, the warden does feel that many vulnerable people and their extended families will be interested in a less intensive scheme I mean it's not just aimed at the elderly is it warden schemes and community warden schemes are aimed at older frailer residents as okay. well as those who might be in some way physically disabled yeah. and of, of any age so yeah. it's, it's about the vulnerability as opposed to the uh, age yes yeah i understand that I, I i i well understand that the mobile warden scheme and the elderly but i i do just want to emphasize that um you know it's not just the elderly who are vulnerable particularly at the moment but i'm I, yeah I, i'm in favour of what's set out in the paper. Lovely. I think in that case, if you don't feel we're going to feel we have agreement that we'll back over the recommendation. Is that okay? So it's uh, that would be under the options. I would mean section ten. I would imagine that'd be A. Would you agree, Catherine? Yeah. yeah. So in that case, that's a uh, unanimous uh, so A. Is that A in both cases? So for yes. recommendation one, to to allow. The, the gambling gay scheme to amend their um, their delivery model, and then with regard to recommendation two, what you do with that remaining funding that won't now be needed by gambling gay? We just thought we'd better formalise that decision as well. Yeah, yeah. So that would also be a. Yeah, yeah. Aye, aye. Aye, aye. Right. Well, I think I think that brings us to the uh, end of our agenda. I'd just like to say thank you, Catherine, for uh, stepping in uh, and, and covering that. That's lovely. Thank you very much, John. Thank you very much for bearing with us through all this this whole process. I think it's been very successful, and I'm I'm hoping obviously that the comms team will put out the the various good news to to everywhere that we've managed to do this as a, a council, as the team, the whole team together. Wonderful. So thank you very much. So that just leaves me 
to say to members, officers, and any members of the public that are listening in, or watching in, shall I say, um, that uh, the next meeting will be scheduled on the 25th of June, Friday, 25th of June at 10 a.m. I would imagine it's going to be the same setup as now. It's the same setup as now, so it'll be for members of the public to sign in uh, and view. But for us, it's a thank you very much, and it's a good night from him. Good night. Bye.